Welcome to the Philidari. The final push. And our World of Warcraft cinematic journey has begun. Welcome to the Philidari, old and new. Today we finish the fight through Dragonflight. Alright friends, it's a pleasure to have you back. This is it everyone. This is the final in-game cinematic stream of World of Warcraft. It's bittersweet. I love these shows, doing them with you guys. It's so much fun and the journey has been absolutely amazing. So I can't wait to enjoy this final night with you before we play World of Warcraft together. And hey, I guess it's not the final night because there will be more scenes coming in the game in the future. So we'll be able to do this again. But I'm very excited, everyone, and I hope you are all pumped, too. Let me say hi, as always, to everybody in the chat who's here tonight. Campfire Goth, Costco Hot Dog, our beautiful mods, Leo Wild, Shay, Mystical is here. Also, we have Kaki P. <laughs> we have Hot Dog again. We have Mayamura. We have Akaria, the absolute legend. Centrillion, Angela Mayer, Unka Noah, John D. Caro. Kiratasu, Sir Glushko, Mystical, John D. Oh man, all the legends are here. OG, Dweeb, Nit, Fury, Azure, Wing, Dumont, Nimleth, Tia Connor, Pepper Jack. So many legends. Chaotica, Sunny Gaming, Linda Graham, Tuttle, Rhapsody, Everdstorm, Soul Mio, Rook is here, Centrillion, Tholos, Night Breeze, Jerry Bortz. Enrique Gonzalez, Will Goyes, a billion cats, so many people, even Victoria. I am so pumped to have you guys here, like I said, for this final night. So I'm very excited. We're going to finish Dragonflight, and that's going to be it, guys. We're going to spend the next couple days. So let me. I, I talked a little bit about this in Discord, which, by the way, hopefully we can pin it now. Is Nightbot awake yet? Okay, I think Nightbot woke up. <laughs> I want to pin the Discord. If, okay, there it is. <laughs> Nightbot, what are you doing? There's a stream going on here. Wake up. Okay, there we go. So I pinned the Discord if you guys want to hop in. Oh my goodness, Campfire Goth has done it. Campfire Goth has gifted five boons of power to Victoria, Sunny Gaming, Stephanie C, Alex Stasha, Miss Lady Bond. Thank you so much, you guys. And Sunny Gaming, absolute beast, Campfire Goth, thank you. The Philidar will use these boons well if you receive one of these gifts of power. Please send a thank you to Campfire God. Let me see the swords in the chat. Absolute legend. Thank you. What a way to start off. I'm very, very excited. As I was saying in Discord, guys, we're going to be going to the game. So the rough plan is this. The rough plan is this. We're going to finish tonight. More logs for the campfire. Yes, thank you. More logs for the campfire. Indeed. Indeed, the campfire goth has spoken. So what we're doing is, this night, we're going to finish the in-game cinematics. It's the final ones. It's the only ones left in Warcraft. What we're going to do after that is community night. Community night is going to be happening within a couple days. I was just discussing it with Aaliyah. After that, we are hopping into Warcraft. We're going to play together. There's going to be some planning that needs to take place, as a lot of you guys have discussed in Discord. I am definitely going to be asking for help with this. I've seen a lot of amazing people in the community, in the Philidari, step up and say, hey, I can help you set up guilds, I can help you set up uh, community and all this stuff. So we're definitely going to be coordinating on that. Uh, you know, whether that means I have to go into the game alone and you guys just give me advice on what to do, or if that means something else. I'm, you got to remember, I'm completely new to Warcraft, so you have to give me a little uh, grace on this. But we're going to figure it out. And then when that's done, uh, all we'll decide is whether we do like one stream where I'm kind of just like doing that, or if we play the game together and that's that. Oh my goodness, Azure Wing has gifted 10 boons of power to the Philidari, to Ezra, Victor, Sarcasm. Oh my goodness, Costco as well says, thank you so much for doing these cinematics. Having played for 17 years, refreshing to see the story from a new perspective. It's helped me fall back in love with the game. Thank you guys so much. Loose Smiles, Lease Lightning, Skycutter. Many of you have got boons of power now from these amazing gifts. Azure Wing gifted them to Ezra, Jay Wild, Lord Mehiro, Pizza Bob Ross, Victor, Sasha, 
And thank you so much, Costco, for being a dragoon for two months. That's right. Thank you for two months of service. Being a dragoon, Costco. You are much appreciated. And Azure, thank you for these boons. You are prepared. <laughs> Thank you guys, man. What a hype way to start out our, our final in-game cinematic stream. It's very exciting and, uh, you know, we're going to make a great time tonight. So thank you everybody who's here and thank you to our mods for helping out. Um, everyone have an opinion on what you should play? Thank you, Mystical. Yeah. As far as the, the character that I choose and stuff, I'm sure I want to get in there and, you know, have my own uh, voice on that stuff. I'm more worried about this sort of executive things like that, like this sort of going in and um, trying to figure out all the ins and outs of the game. I feel like that's going to be a little bit more difficult, so we'll figure it out. But that's the rough plan, guys. Uh, we're going to do that. Whether that means I do one stream uh, where it's just me doing all that, we'll see what the mods and, and the people who are really experts in Warcraft, like all the lore masters here, suggest. Most likely we'll be discussing that in Discord, so hop in the Discord if you want to be a part of the conversation there and the planning. And then after that, we will be going into the game and we'll be doing our first you know play of the game right from the beginning we will be playing wow together i cannot wait to launch the philidari and uh and play with all you guys have i decided on a faction yet i kind of decided on alliance but not fully somebody said that i think demon hunter is alliance and i was like ooh, i feel like or illidan is alliance is that true somebody said that last stream so if that is true it kind of makes sense to do philidari alliance but we are not 100% sold. Like I said, I want to get in and kind of see see the options before we make our final decision. Um, I also really like the Jaina storyline. Um, if we're going to be starting out in Azeroth, Battle for Azeroth, I thought that was an amazing storyline. I would love to play that personally. So, Demon Hunters Alliance. Okay. Demon Hunters both. Demon Hunters both. All classes are both. Can be both. Okay. I see. So yeah, maybe Alliance, maybe Horde. I love both. And I'm going to be honest, guys, I'm probably going to do both. As in, I'm probably going to make a character for both. If that makes sense. I want to see both and just get the experience. Um, again, I'm totally new to the game, so I don't really know like any other uh, uh, details besides that. You can be a Night Elf or a Blood Elf. Demon That's right. That's right. Illidan is neutral, but Illidan is a Night Elf, which is Alliance. Got it. I think that's what you guys are explaining. If I want to be a Night Elf... That's going to be the decision maker, right? I see, I see. You can play both. Yeah, I would love to play both. I, you know, I don't have a particular, like, uh, you know, Alliance or Horde. I love all the characters. I think they're super awesome. And as you guys know, I love Sawfang. I love uh, Jaina. I love absolutely everybody. There's nobody where I'm like, ah, I don't like that faction. And I think all the characters are interesting, you know? Absolutely everybody, like Sylvanas, Anduin, I think they're all awesome. Yes, I definitely want to record myself rolling my character and everything. Um, maybe I would record it, yeah, I'll record it offline, maybe. We'll, we'll see what happens. I'm gonna really, I wanna really be in touch with you guys as a community and decide what's best for that. Because it's gonna be like such a big moment that we've been building up to. But I'm very excited. Um, so that's the rough plan. We're gonna enjoy tonight and then within a few days um we will be we'll be starting and don't worry i'm gonna be very vocal about it i'll be doing like community posts i'll be doing discord posts everything letting you guys know when that first warcraft game playing stream starts i want to build like build up to it and have a huge uh huge night i think it's gonna be so much fun like we've been planning this for how long now it's gonna be awesome hello lucy hello ezra denny a lot of awesome people are here if it's Alliance, it would um, mostly be new to me too because I've been Horde. Awesome, yeah. And then somebody else said we can actually make a community which is cross-faction, so we could have both things going on. Love both factions. Yes, Christine. She's got another new mount. That's awesome. I would love to see it. Azure Wing. <laughs> There's too many non-members in the chat. Thank you so much for the two. This boon will not go unnoticed. We will use it for our war effort. Thank you so much, Azure. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I really appreciate those those membership gifts. Guys, if you got those gifts, like I said, please throw a thanks to our amazing gifters and also enjoy the perks. Enjoy the emotes and everything else. Still got to add more emotes. Let me know if you guys have ideas for new emotes. I'd love to hear about it. 
Hot Dog says, my suggestion, uh, play what speaks to you on a personal level. That's totally a dwarf, Gimli. I love it. Another gift. Oh my goodness. As you're winning with the five gifts to Leroy's, Greg Arnold, the Suspectator, Carlos Rojas, and Sergei Pare. Thank you so much for these boons of power. They will not go unnoticed in the Philidari. Thank this noble warrior for what they have done. <laughs> wow. Azure was not kidding. Not enough members in the chat and just throws more boons of power to you guys. <laughs> Please send a thank you over to Azure. That's incredibly generous. Thank you. Murloc emotes. What? <laughs> Let me see the swords in the chat for Azure. Oh my goodness, Jerry. <laughs> Jerry Bors has gifted five boons of power to the Philidari, to Shay, Vexcoon Kilrog, Leo Wild, Alexander Demrick, and Dryah. Thank you for these boons of power, Jerry. The Philidari will take them into battle and hold them close to our hearts. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Tekken 8, I, I really want to react to Tekken 8. That's another thing. I have so much I want to do, honestly. Thank you, guys. Oh, man, I'm so excited. Thank you guys for everything. This is amazing. <laughs> Thanks for the gift. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoying the gifts. Let me see those swords for our awesome community. Super generous tonight. Yeah, you guys are getting a lot of perks. Love to see it. Love to see it. Thanks for being amazing. So, yeah, that's the plan. We're going to have a great night. Uh, I think... Akari had already posted the link in the chat here if you guys want to follow along. It is also pinned in Discord if you want to follow along with our journey tonight, cinematic journey, and see what's up and uh, see what's in store for us. It's going to be great. Oh my goodness, Linda! Linda Graham Tuttle has gifted 10 to the community. 10 boons of power to Salamio, Benjamin, Brian, Padlit, the day's doorway, Angus Sherrington, educated Viking. Ishta, Peanut, Jacob, Allen, Raul, Zamfia. Thank you so much for this amazing gift, Linda. The Philidar will use these well. And this is the perfect time to rally our forces before we go to battle. <laughs> wow, you guys are amazing tonight. Thank you so much. And we have another Dragoon. Oh my goodness, Cocky Pie. Welcome to the Order of Dragoons. Our most powerful order of warriors in the Philidari. Claim your equipment, claim your weapon, and show me the helms of the dragoons in chat for Cocky Pie. You are prepared. <laughs> Thank you so much, Pie. I can't wait to see what video you choose. As a dragoon, we're going to be doing some viewer choice probably at the end of this stream. Can't wait to see what you chose. Make sure to connect your Discord to YouTube so you can hook that up. Thank you so much, everybody. What an amazing night. Hello, how you doing? What you need? You need something cool? All right, Leah says hi, everybody. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes, let me see the helms of the warriors. Please refrain from posting spoilers. Yes, use the redacted emote, guys. Use it well. <laughs> yes, I appreciate you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, welcome, Pi. Hello, Dai. Aaliyah, yeah, she's here. You just can't see her. She's here. Oh my goodness, we have a new knight. Kothias, welcome to the Order of Knights. We knight you this day and raise you to the honorable position of Knight of the Philidari. Rise, claim your place in our number. Thank you so much, Kothias. Enjoy the perks, my friend. <laughs> what a crazy stream, man. What a crazy stream. 37 new members already. After this stream, nothing. Oh my goodness, Will Gonyes with the 10 super chat. He says, I play both and you should too. But with the war within coming up, I think your first character should be Alliance in case there's any faction specific story for Anduin and Illyria Windrunner. You make a fine point, Will, and we will use this wisdom well. In the war within. <laughs> Thank you so much for the 10. That's a that's a great point for a first character. I love it. Thank you so much for the support and no, knowledgeable support, by the way. A true lore master, everybody. We have a true lore master in our wits, in our midst. I love the channel I await with great anticipation. Thank you so much, Kothias. Yeah, you guys are absolutely amazing. I'm gonna be pushing hard 
um, for the next month on this channel. We got some amazing stuff on the way, and I just I can't wait to share it all with you guys. I described some of the plans earlier, but pretty much the plan is that uh, in the next few days we're launching our Warcraft play. We're gonna be playing Warcraft uh, pretty much through the month until we come to Final Fantasy VII uh, Rebirth. We're gonna be playing FF7 Rebirth on stream as well. And it's going to be just an amazing thing. And honestly, I suspect that Warcraft, you know, is kind of a really long thing. So we'll just keep doing Warcraft, <laughs> you know, um, even after Rebirth, because, you know, it's Warcraft. It's not going anywhere, especially if you guys are enjoying it and I'm enjoying it. It sounds like a really fun idea. Must play both sides. Sounds great, Chaotica. Yes, you have a lot of lore masters. There's a lot of lore masters here. Yeah, I believe me. I know, because I have actually learned the lore. You know what would be really fun? I had this idea the other day, and let me know if you guys, let me know if you guys like this idea. I was like, you know, it would be so funny if, like, to sort of test how much lore I actually know at this point. Because I actually know kind of a lot, I feel, from you guys teaching me every stream. It adds up to a lot of hours of you guys teaching me lore, essentially. So I was like, I wonder how I would do at lore compared to like the average World of Warcraft enjoyer. Do you guys think I would know more or less? Because I've pretty much had hours of like master classes on the lore from you guys. And like every cutscene I watch, it'll be like, you guys explain everything in detail. It's not just me watching the cutscene. Is there a mod in here? There are several. Yes. I think a quiz night would be really funny. I think it'd be really funny. And I don't know if that means, like, you guys could go and somehow have a private conversation and, like, plan out questions for me to look at or something. I don't know. It'd just be a funny... I think it'd be a funny idea. Uh, what's that, Kill Rog? What did I miss? Say so sorry to hear that. But yeah, it's gonna be crazy. Got a laptop with the bat. Oh, I see. Uh -uh. Probably more than many new players, but less than some. I mean, I imagine the vets know so much, yeah. What's up, Black Wolves? We're playing very soon. Yeah, this is, this is the last cutscene, so we're probably going to be playing. I would say absolutely within a week, we will be in Warcraft and, and playing. So get ready. Yeah. Get ready. You're probably within the average range. That makes sense, yeah. That would be fun for you guys to test me. There's in-game trivia? No way we could do that. Yeah, I feel like it would be actually more targeted for the mods and dragoons to compile the questions. Um, and people could submit questions too. Because you guys know what I've seen. You know what I mean? I would want you to test me on what I know as opposed to just like throwing stuff that I absolutely don't know to have like a gotcha. It's like, well, I haven't even read that. How would I know it? You know, I think it'd be really fun to kind of test me on what I've seen. Um, and I think also multiple choice could be probably the best format on this, but we'll see. We'll see what we do. A ton of questions that you might answer better than we. Yeah, that could be fun. What's up, Laura? Been waiting all week for the stream. Yeah, great to see you. We're so excited. This is this is gonna be a big one. We're gonna start in just a second. Just want to tell you guys about our plans for the Warcraft stuff. I'm way ahead of the average beginner. Thank you, Linda. Because of you guys. 17 years of playing, we'll do that. Yeah. <laughs> Laura, question number one. What is a step life? <laughs> Of course, of course. The only lore question that matters. Of course. Uh, first time in a while. Hello, welcome. It's great to have you guys. Yeah. Will the WoW gameplay become a video? Most likely, Vortex. It'll become a video. It'll also be. It will be like uh, archived on the channel. So it may very well end up uh, being published separately. I'll just see how I want to handle it, and we'll see how the stream goes. Like, for example, if the stream itself ends up getting like a ton of views. We'll probably just leave the stream up as a video. You know what I mean? If it's doing well in the algorithm, I might also just post it because then because then anybody can watch it afterwards. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It, do, it does no good to ask me questions that I've never even seen. It's like, well, obviously I don't know that. You know. What scene are we up to? Uh, we are up to Akari. I just said it in chat. It just gave me. But I'm, I'm gonna pull up the list in a second. Yeah. Wow, can be quite addictive indeed. Indeed, it can. Ah, there it is. There's the list, guys. So this very list is what we're looking at. And I think we ended up getting quite a bit in there. Hello, Seren. 
Hey Phil, so happy to catch you streaming. Hope you enjoy the end of Dragonflight. Thank you so much, Seren. Awesome to finally have you on the stream live. If you have any questions, you can let our awesome mods know. But yeah, join us. It's gonna be a great night. Yeah, and it's funny. That's that's what the kind of the magic of streaming is. Like, there's a lot of people who are um, very regular viewers who don't um, often get to come onto a stream or always, you know, say it's my first time. And that's kind of always an awesome reminder that you know. It's only a couple hours that it's sort of the magic of live entertainment that we're here and we're we're hanging out together, so. Wow addiction. Twenty years and chugging along, yeah. There it is, a matter of time. So I'm gonna find it. There it is, uh, on the screen. A matter of time, in-game cinematic dragonflight. We're gonna be starting with that, and we are on 69 of maybe 95 or something, 96. Yeah, so a, around 30 left, I believe, and it's uh, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. We we may watch Senegos's farewell. It might have auto played for a second, but it says it's fully watched, so I don't know. I feel like I've seen that. Yeah, shout out. I wanted to give a big shout out to Akaria, who always makes these playlists, does so much for the community. Like, absolutely incredible work, Akaria. Thank you. So much fun. Uh, Blizzard destroyed his inscription business. Same 20 years, and my daughter is 10 years. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, I respect you guys who've been in it. I know a lot of you guys have been grinding on the Warcraft stuff for a long time. And it shows with your amazing knowledge. Old Dra- Oh, yeah, we saw that. That was actually a really cool scene. He, uh, he flew into, like, the magic stream and evaporated. It was really nice. Shout out to everyone who helped the playlist. Yeah, shout out to you guys. A lot of you guys I know have, uh, have been communicating with Akaria and you know explaining oh this one should be in there you might have forgot one and said it's super helpful super helpful you guys are the best because it's a lot of work to make this playlist for Akaria we're starting with a good one perfect yeah I love uh, I love jumping right into a more cinematic one I was 12 when I started playing wow turning 30 in May that's incredible Costco yeah, what a, what a journey. Like I said, I I just kind of dipped in at the end of the journey here, I should say, you know, a few months ago now. And it's been so uh it's been so cool to learn about the fandom uh, as much as the lore itself and what you guys en enjoy. Yeah, can we get a big thanks for Akaria? Honestly, can we get can we get a big thanks for Akaria in the chat? Like Akaria has done so much. Even the even the the uh, the dragoon tier uh, the dragoon viewer list that Akaria made is incredibly helpful. Um, makes it all make sense, you know, so we don't miss anybody's. And I'm terrible at Excel. I don't even know how to you know run it at all. So thank you, big thank you to Akaria, everybody. Been playing since I was 15. I'm 34. Akaria the Goat, yes. <laughs> have you seen the Anduin cinematic from Legion? Uh, yes, I absolutely have. John D, that one was epic. It was called uh, The Broken Shore, I believe. Great stuff. Yeah. Don't want our music pause there. Yeah, big thanks to Akaria. W, Akaria. Yeah, let's see those swords for Akaria, absolutely. This is, this is what's super fun. I mean, you know, we appreciate the effort, Akaria, because this is what helps, you know make the com let the community run smoothly and everything and you know those taking those few minutes to do that is actually incredibly helpful and it saves a lot of time on stream makes the show run smoothly it just means the world yeah what's up connor no not today not today we're gonna finish up all the stuff and then play uh, afterwards a lost memento oh i remember that one that was actually really good yeah I started in 2009, and now I'm 31 with two kids. That's amazing. Yeah, huge thanks to Akaria. Absolute legend. Yeah, we appreciate it immensely. Hello, goddess of fate. Good evening from Germany. Hello, Lori Games. Yeah, and you know, I, I really appreciate the community too, because I can see you guys actually thanking Akaria um, for, for allowing these shows to run so smooth, so thank you. And like I said, though, though we'll be at the end of this particular playlist and these in-game cutscenes, there's always going to be more in the future in the game that we can play together and see, and it's going to be a blast. 63 here, still playing WoW since end of 
Burning Crusade. That's amazing. Great to have you. That's incredible. 56 this year. That's awesome. It's so awesome to see you guys uh, enjoy it for so long, and it's great. It's got to feel like coming home when a new uh, when a new expansion drops. I can imagine, right? Yeah, it's gonna be so fun, man. No server yet, guys. I'm I'm saving all that for um, kind of like one thing at a time. When we're done with this, we will knock all that out. It's gonna probably be one session where it's all done. Like that's going to be either privately with the with you lore masters in discord or it'll be on stream um i'm mostly concerned about stuff like um you know stuff like uh making sure my information is private and everything like that so i want to make sure if i'm like setting up back end stuff if i have to do that off stream or on stream but we'll we'll figure it out you guys know the game better than me Block Perfection says people have been playing uh, during 2008, and I was born in 2008. That's awesome. <laughs> That's crazy. But yeah, it's going to be a great night, guys. We'll start in just a second. We got a lot to do, and maybe we'll have some viewer choice at the end. So why don't we hop into the cutscenes? I am so excited to uh, continue the journey. So you have 700 days played in game. That's amazing. I'm actually curious how many hours that is. Somebody wants to run the numbers. Boot it up in Reserve Name Guild um, before you boot up the stream. Yeah, that's a great idea. Out. That's a great idea. So maybe I'll do like the essential stuff. You know, that's that's not even particularly exciting. Like, oh, I'm gonna type in a name and hit enter or something. You know, maybe we can do that off stream with help from some very uh, knowledgeable members, which pretty much all you guys are <laughs> at this point. So um, that'll be awesome. And then we can uh, do the exciting stuff on stream, like you know, uh, making a character, getting in the game, stuff like that. When you say lore masters, do you mean dragoons? When I say lore masters, I pretty much mean like lore masters of, of Warcraft. When I say dragoons, I mean, you know, our amazing members and only the most elite of the Philidari. But yeah, you guys are all lore masters to me. Like, honestly, I still know very little compared to the ocean of information that you guys know and teach me about every time, so. 16,000 hours, 800 uh, is, is 700 days, wow. That's crazy, 700 days. I'm sure a lot of that is padded though. Like for example, when I used to stream, what was it, Minecraft? I used to stream Minecraft, I used to play Minecraft a lot. I would oftentimes leave Minecraft on for extended many, many hours period of time. I was like setting up stream, doing other stuff, you know, it would just stay on, so I feel like a lot of those numbers, you know, you weren't playing every second of it, for sure. Sometimes maybe even half of it isn't play. I do have Lore Master title in game. There you go, Leo. Thanks for those links, bots. Bots. Mods. Night bot. <laughs> David Granger. 16k hours is a good start. Yeah, it's a good start. It's a good start, yeah. You getting there? Thank you so much, guys. Uh, if you want to check out me and Aaliyah's new channel... Philip and Leah. It's our new couples channel. We're going to be putting some really cool content on there. I think so far there's three videos on it. If you want to see our travels, our vlogs, our cosplay, our gaming. Um, lots of fun stuff there. 17k hours ain't that much for a 20 year old game. That's a good point. A lot of people would like kind of frown at that. But ask yourself how many hours of TV have you watched in the past like 10 years? 20 years? It's probably more than that. Maybe. So yeah, it, it's not it's not as bad as people think, like however you decide to spend your time. Best title ever. 300 days on my main, there you go, 300 days. It's a meta achievement, okay. Lore Master Den Lore, that's amazing. 3K quests, incredible. I think it's quite cool that the game actually tracks this stuff, specifically because you're able to celebrate it, you know? You're able to celebrate it in ways that's really kind of gratifying to be able to look at, look back, and be like, "Oh, that's right, you know, I, uh, I did that." Yeah, it's quite cool. Is a mid-level tunes, awesome. Many times it was idling in a city. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, uh, you know, you're not actually actively playing for a lot of that. For myself, it could be as much as. Half of it is padded with 
you know, interactions and stuff. Yeah, but anyways, why don't we get started? I'm super excited. I'm gonna have a drink here, and I think, let's do it. Let's do the first video. And, uh, yeah, let's do it, guys. Absolutely. Let's, let's uh, pause our glorious music for just a moment here. And uh, let's begin. I'll do my YouTube intro. I'm just going to say, you know, no matter what comes next, obviously we're going to be playing the game. Um, we're going to be doing more cutscenes as they come out, as they release and everything, now that we're current. Um, so I just want to say it's been so, so much fun. And I'm sure I'll say this is going to be the end. It's been so much fun to enjoy this with you guys, this journey through, uh, through the game. And uh, no matter what comes next, this has just been amazing. You guys are the best. A matter of time coming up. <clears throat> On my World of Warcraft cinematic journey. Finally, we've come to the end of the Dragonflight in-game cinematics. The end of my Warcraft cinematic journey, but really only the beginning. We're going to be playing Warcraft together with the community, launching our own guild, and it's going to be so much fun fun and I hope you guys all join me for that gameplay it's gonna be an absolute blast so let's enjoy these last cutscenes together if you're enjoying our time together make sure to subscribe and check out some of the other videos we've covered on this channel now let us begin <clears throat> my friends lore masters join me in battle once again you guys know it you know it's coming all right, let's make sure we're lined up here. Leroy! <laughs> I know that video. We actually watched it on stream. <laughs> yeah. Ah, oh, man. All right, Lore Masters, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's enjoy it. Here it is. Our final night of in-game catch-ups for World of Warcraft. What a beautiful journey. And it's just beginning. Let's do it. Ooh, beautiful set piece. This is Alex Stratza's place. Do the clouds still accost your mind? Oh, something much more terrifying. The moment of clarity. Whoa! I have. Whoa. A million lives and witnessed their endless unfolding threats. Was it a vision? A memory? Amazing. A dream? Is there any difference? Nazdormo, what did you see? What did he My see? My hour grows late. Those who broke their oaths to the timeways. What? The infinites have struck. Huh? Ah! No! I do not know what Eridicron has promised them. Eridicron. And yet... We have defeated each of them before. Yes. But together... The infinite horizon is all but inevitable. Wow. And once I become what they desperately want me to be... No! Darkest version of myself. Yep. The future will be lost. No. And so will I. That's so sad. What a great I am scene. not giving up on you, my friend. We are not giving up on you. Wow, the darkness encroaching. What a great scene. That was incredible. I want to see his his vision again. I really like the opening shots here. Uh, great establishing shot of the space. It really shows like, you know, how sort of uh, whimsical and and amazing the architecture is of this place. And then we go intimate. We get this great shot of the walk up. Um, you can see he feels lonely. This is what this shot means to me. You know, he's got a loneliness to him. He's all alone in his Dude, journey. Only he can see time. Uh, this is a friend trying to walk up to him and say like, hey. You know, uh, you're not in this alone. And then he kind of explains how terrifying it is to have this knowledge. And uh, it's quite emotional. Look Still at this. Accost your mind. And of course, her tail armor is so cool, right? Thing 
much more terrifying. I want to see this. Of clarity. What does he see? What in the world? And I want to say the uh, the sound design here. It was genuinely unnerving. Almost like a like a shriek or like a like a high pitched laugh or something. It's really uncomfortable. Clarity. Did you see that? I saw a Riddicron for like one frame. Look at this. Yep. Three frames. That son of a gun. Three frames. He snuck his way in there. Really, really good. Now let's see. And then this person. So I can only imagine this is the visage of this guy. Right? Oh man, I don't know what is going on there, but it's terrifying. There was one more thing that I missed there. What was that? Let's go back. What is that? I think it's just like a close up of him as a dragon. Yeah. I have lived a million lives and witnessed their endless unfolding threats. Wait, that's Deathwing? No. No way. Was it a vision? A memory or a dream? Is there any difference? Does Dormo That is Deathwing? What did you see? I love it too. It's like he, he feels like he, he must often feel like he's lost in a dream. Like what's real, what's a dream, what's a vision of the future, right? So I think it's really interesting that she kind of takes this time to be like, what did you see? But I love that even as she asks this, the performance is really cool and the expression and the animation, because you can feel it's kind of like, do I want to know this? And it's got to be terrifying to ask that, right? You see. My hour grows late. And that's going to be him, right? Those who broke their oaths to the timeways, the infinites have struck a bargain. I love that shot because he's like, they've struck a bargain. And it's like, well, with who? And then it reveals a Riddicron there. And it's like, oh, no. Really nicely done. I do not know what a Riddicron has promised them. Yeah. And yet... We have defeated each of them. So before. awesome. Yes. But together... The infinite horizon is all but inevitable. So the guy with the glasses has been in it. Okay, that's really good to know. Thank you. And once I become what they desperately want me to be, the darkest version of myself. I love it. The music ramping up. You can feel his voice kind of like his voice starts to slip. Did you catch that? It's like, like his voice starts to slip into the darkest version of himself. He almost can't control it, and then he snaps back. So good. The future will be lost. And so will I. So good. I am not giving up on you, my friend. This is great, too. This moment of just like, okay, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to support him, you know, in his moment of, uh, of need. I think it's really good. Yeah, good transition. There's some really good transitions here too, Huthor. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, just a really well done scene. I loved it. I'm awesome. Not giving up on you. Great scene. A really good way to start our uh, to start our night tonight. All right, let's go on to the next one. Fractures in time. Launch trailer. Got a feeling it's going to be kind of like the classic patches. We're going to see a little bit of what we just saw with some other stuff. Hints of what's to come, yep. I like the editing style they do for these. I have lived a million lives and witnessed their endless... Un this is really good. Whoa, Fellmaster! And David, we got some super chats coming in. Thank you so much, guys. At Elf is Chrono Lord Dios, the infinite dragonflight. Their former bronze dragons broke their oaths to the time waves. That is such a cool concept. Thank you, Fellmaster, for the five. And David. Thank you for the ten. David says... Champions! Defeated his evil future self in Cataclysm so that fate has happened. 
because he has corrupted aspect that went evil to rewrite all past. But after seeing his death, they give their power up. Thank you so much, David, for that context. Man, you guys are killing it with the super chats tonight. Thank you so much, guys. <laughs> Incredible. Yeah, I, I'm i loving it. This is such a cool scene. Let's continue on. Holding threats. Okay, we're getting some in-game stuff now. My hour grows late. Thank you. Have struck. Thank you, Ikaria. Is it Chromie? Is that Chromie? Chromie! Chromie has spoken! Evoker specialization. That's awesome. It is time to untangle the time waves. Illidan? The Lich King? What? Okay, that was awesome. I have faith in you, my friends. All is not lost. Yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> yeah, those, those, listen, those typically show stuff that's going to come, but I've, what I've been conditioned to know now. So we're just gonna go into the next one. I love getting a glimpse of it all. Really setting the stage for some cool scenes. And of course you get to see some gameplay, um, specific stuff that I don't really understand the full context of because I don't play yet. But I love it. With that, we're gonna go on to the next one because um, usually they'll just show us what's gonna happen here. So this is Dawn of the Infinite Interlude and it seems to be our friend. Let's see. Whoa! Oh my. Oh no. No. Is gone. That's him? That's it. No. I won't give up on you. No. Yeah, that's it. That's his final self, isn't it? So this is Chromie, who's also a time dragon, in the end, not giving up on him. Amazing. Yeah, thank you for the likes, guys. Thank you so much for the likes on the stream. Um, that was awesome. I really like it. And uh, it's cool to kind of get a glimpse of the future like that, of what might happen, because we've heard about it a lot. Azure Wing has gifted five boons of power to the Philidari. Kay Bailey, John Greyfield, Babadito, Redloki, and Cy Crawford. Thank you for these boons of power, Azure Wing. The Philidari will use them well and take them into battle with honor. <laughs> Guys, if you got a boon, a gifted membership, please, please thank Azure Wing. There's a lot of new members tonight and I'm super excited to have you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys are incredible. Yeah, really generous of you, thank you. <laughs> Lots of new members. Enjoy the emos, guys. Anagrams of their bronze dead name. That's cool, Car. So they, uh, yeah, they become they become their final form, and that's it. He said, like, Nosdormu's gone. Now I'm Murazan. That's that's pretty cool. Oh, it actually is. So, Chromi Morky. Wow. Yeah, thank you for those swords, guys. All right, let's go on to the next one. Dawn of the Infinite Finale. Let's see what happens with Nosdormu here. Loving these so far, man. What a great night. Wee! They defeated him? Tell me, little one. No. Have you ever questioned why the Titans preserve this timeline? What? The Titans safeguard our world from monsters like you. Ooh, he's got something. Your faith means nothing to them. As what? you burn in the flames of my brother's wrath. His voice. They will not come. All they wanted 
was our world. With this, uh -huh. the Harbinger will pry it from their grasp. Welcome, Chrissy. And when the Titans come to reclaim their prize, I will be waiting. Whoa! I really like the implications of this one. I really like the implications. Uh, here we stopped Riddicron and Morazan rose, but we quickly jumped back in time to revert the changes. Okay, got it. Saved Riddicron down in the process. That's so fun. That's so fun. I love it. The consequences of time. All right, I want to listen to this again. He's kind of explaining uh, some really interesting we stuff with the Titans. It's nothing to them. Faith means nothing to them. Then he goes on to say that, like when the Titans attack, I'll be the one to stop them. I think. As you burn in the flames of my brother's wrath, they will not come. All they wanted was our world. Yeah, our world. With this. The Harbinger will pry it from their grasp. Seems related and when to the Titans than... come to reclaim their prize. I will be waiting. Interesting. I I think it's a cool idea. And it's interesting because he he seems to be not like completely against the idea that the jailer was was going on, right? The jailer was like, what did he say? United world will fall or something like in the cosmos. So it seems like he is more like, I'm going to be the most powerful to stop the Titans from taking their prize, meaning this world, um, which is setting up, of course, uh, who's setting up the war with Insta. I think it's really good. Yeah, he wants to fight the Titans. Yeah, that's what he said. Very intriguing. I love these characters. These uh, This trio is so cool. And his voice is just... Um, absolutely awesome really really intriguing scene that uh now i'm interested to see what's going on with the titans yeah look to the right of him in the portal what's this let me see will not come all they wanted was our world with this the harbinger look to the right right from their grass and when the titans come to he doesn't know oh no prize, what am i looking for i will be waiting ah! oh wait a second it's so quick who in the heck oh man that's really subtle that's so fun that's so fun. There's like one frame where it's a little bit more clear. It seems to be a female elf. Uh, could this be the Naifu, as you guys called her? I don't know. That's going to be my theory right now. But very interesting. Very interesting. And I love stuff like this. I love stuff like this because it's a little bit rewarding on a, uh, on a rewatch. Stuff like this. Step knife. It's it's a little bit rewarding on the rewatch because it's like if you know what's coming and you go back and check it out, it's like she was there the whole time. This is very cool. Uh, it could all it could also be Azara. I love the sound of that. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Felmaster. The item in Aridicron's hand is the same item he took from the dragon statue in Secrets of the Reach cinematic, and that is Zalatar in the portal thank you for this boon of knowledge fellow master <laughs> and thank you so much for the five man you guys are so nice thank you thank you thank you redacted awesome yeah now i love stuff like this it's so fun i hadn't noticed that either that's so cool hey man that's one of the reasons i love going through these cinematics with you guys together because it's kind of like we can all put our brains to the to the test here and be like Ooh, what's this what does that mean but I mean, this is very subtle. This is incredibly subtle. It's pretty much like three frames you can see here. I mean, look at this. Look at that. And it's very, like, it's it's very obscure. And your eye is very much not on her. I think that's so much fun. Hello, Aaliyah. Aaliyah is here. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah. They're doing crazy stuff with this. Zalatab's in Season's Discovery, which is like Manawa. That's so cool. Yeah, 
thank you so much, guys. Check out Aaliyah. She did the best. She just hit... Actually, did you hit it? You're like this close to 31,000 followers on Twitch. Insanity. Insanity. The filmmaking keen eye helps out. Hey, listen. With the lore masters here, like you guys, I mean, it's just so much fun. <laughs> you haven't seen any of these either? That's awesome, Jerry. I'm glad you're chilling with us. The look of the void stuff. Yeah, I'm, I think that's just so cool. And I think they're so smart to put in stuff like this. For the reason that you got millions of people who are playing this and watching these things. Why not slip some interesting visual sort of uh, secrets in there? And then you know, just, just like somebody said in chat, that when it gets caught, it's going to get shared all over the internet, man. It's going to get shared all, all over everything. That's going to be great. Oh my goodness, Mags the Ghoul. Thank you for two months of being a warrior. Rise, claim your place amongst the warriors of the Philidari. Two months of beautiful fighting in our service. <laughs> Thank you so much. And David Granger. Thank you so much for the five, David. And he simply says, so the Titans murdered Jarge in the war as Alatath made alliances and plans to beat them, but the other gods looked, locked her away for a reason. I love it. Thanks so much for the info, David. Love and figuring all this out as we watch. Thank you guys for the super chats. <laughs> it's not confirmed, but it certainly is her. Yeah, I mean, it looks very much like her. So that's, that's right where my mind went. I'm like, all right, who could it be? It's not Sylvanas. It's gotta be her. I didn't see it when I watched this. I would be very surprised if anybody saw that on the first watch. Simply because your eye is drawn to the, uh, you know, the place of highest contrast in the image, which is the middle right here. Uh, it's it's the subject walking away. So this is absolutely put in as like a, you know, somebody might catch it out of thousands and thousands of people that watch it. I think that's really fun. Yeah, I'd be curious how many of you guys saw that instantly on the first watch. Very impressed. But I love it. It's super fun. And it just adds a little bit of the uh, intrigue to it. There's a little bit more going on here. Ijarge. I definitely didn't catch that on my first. That's how I would say it. I would say Ijarge. You would say Yasharaj. That's a cool name. If you look at the War Within preview, she's Alatath with the disc artifact. I love it. Uh, I think we actually might have seen that on something earlier. I saw it first watch. That's awesome, Denny. Impressive. Good eye. You got a good eye. I think Isharj was one of the funny old gods. Especially the Shah being the side effect of Titans. I love it. I love the scene. Let's continue. As ever, Eridicron uh, and Matt Mercer, who plays his, his friend. Amazing, amazing actors involved with this. All right, Chromi Alex Stratza Nosdormu epilogue. This sounds like a really cool scene. Everybody gets a bit of a reunion, maybe? Let's check it out. Thank you, champion. Without you and Chronormu's bravery, I could not imagine what would have. Nosdormu? Chronormu. Nosdormu! Ah. <laughs> Champion! What kind of champ champ you got this time? Not what kind of champ? Everything. The clouds in my vision have parted. Okay. And I can breathe without doubt or despair. Great. I feel alive again. Wow. Thanks to you. Welcome to the Dragon Eye. This is huge. Eridicron escaped through a kind of Void tear, taking Galakron's essence with him. A void gate. His dark dealings have come to fruition. It feels like he's leaving this war to his kin. His hatred for the Titans is all he cares about. Interesting. Nosdormu, can you perceive where he has gone? He has passed beyond my sight. Okay. All I see now. Are burning embers ah. encroaching upon 
Marithra must be warned. No. If Farrakh leads their forces now, he will be vicious. He is and so strong, Farrakh. We are most vulnerable. The World Tree. Yes. As dangerous as he is. For now, we must leave Eritochron to his schemes and steal ourselves for whatever Farrakh and Viranoth are preparing to unleash. Okay. The defense of Amirdrasil comes first. Cool. No matter what flies ahead, you were right, Prenormal. You were the right. The future is worth fighting for. That was really good for an in-game, uh, that was a non-pre-rendered in-game one. It was really good. There was, like, really great music there. There were some interesting shots. You don't usually get that with those. They're kind of usually just, like, eh, standard. Kind of like you would get in, um, sometimes they can be kind of like you would get in, um, I don't know, a game like Mass Effect or something during the conversations. It's just over the shoulder, reverse each time. This is cool. A boosted paladin. Oh, that was the character? Yeah. This is the end game of the expansion? I'm really excited. We're, we're getting into it now, guys. We're getting into it. Welcome to the Dragon Isles. You guys keep saying that, which tells me there must be some very funny dialogue or in-game joke going on there. Yasharaj is the correct way to say it. Of course. The quote correct way to say it. Is the correct way to say anything? You decide. Yeah, I'm very impressed with it. They they uh they up the ante and they as they should, as they should. They have this many people playing it. I think it's great. All right, we have now it seems like maybe the start of a of a new segment here, of a new uh, uh a new little section. It's called Vironoth Alex Stratza Convo. And I know this person, I believe. Oh, okay. She's the ice villain. I'm super curious where this is going to go. Super curious. Uh, you can hear it in the cinematic. Sound glitch. Wait, what happened? There's a sound glitch? Last patch are almost on par with pre-rendered engine. Yeah, they're very good. Like I said, the pre-rendered, pretty much you'll be able to tell with the sophistication of the lighting. It's very good. And um, also, there'll be a little bit more depth of field. There'll be kind of like light interaction. It's a little bit different, too. And, of course, the facial capture. Um... How many folks remember Deathwing would roast entire zones? That actually sounds fun. It sounds really fun. What am I drinking? Uh, this is a tea that Aaliyah made me, and it's a variety of green tea that she gloriously made. I got roasted in Kata so many times, really. The Welcome to the Dragon Isles. Oh, it's it's a it's a sound glitch in the game. I see what you're saying. It's a sound glitch. So you'd be like playing a great cutscene and they're like, Welcome to the Dragon Isles. <laughs> During the cutscene? Okay, that's really funny. That's actually really funny. Th there was a sound glitch. What was it? Uh, a couple streams ago. There was a really funny sound glitch and it was like, it was a dwarf. Do you guys remember that? You guys explained it to me like, oh, it's this dwarf saying like, I have many wares, brother. And it was just like glitching just the first like half of that dialogue, like I bleh, bleh, like this one word or something, it was totally insane. It was like in a super serious cutscene. <laughs> Sounds nice of her. It's very nice of her. Has earned the achievement. Stood in fire. Rendering scenes didn't get the the NPC dialogues. <laughs> uh that was the same one with Rathian and Alex Straza. That was the one, wasn't it? It was a dwarf again. Why is it just this one guy? <laughs> Why is it this one guy? He's just like, he's very needy. He's very needy. No matter where he is, he's got to be heard. He's like, ah, I don't have enough attention. Woke up! That's so funny. Uh, I want to say before I click, I want to find this screenshot because this is an amazing shot right here i love this composition framing it's really good 
Let's watch it. <clears throat> I knew you would come. I love it. Subtle. After you forced us into slumber in that titan prison. Really nice. You came to me. Great conversation. You heard me? Every word. You said it doesn't feel like a victory. Yeah. Not without you. Uh huh. How could you say that? After everything, you were my dearest friend. Wow. And losing Sad. you to this conflict broke my heart. Interesting. You promised me you would not force huh. the Titan's will upon us. Wow. But the eggs, Alex Straza. You did nothing while your masters warped our children still in the shell. Wow. This is dark. That abhorrent act should never have happened. And I regret my part in it every day. Huh. Your lies have grown sweeter. Huh. Honey to hear. And poison to taste. Ooh. Viranoth, you have always fought for the good of dragon kind. But Eridicron does not. Mm. Vengeance is all he craves. Interesting. Still so naive. Alex Straza, believing that the world we once shared still exists. Huh. It is gone. And so, yes, all that remains is vengeance. Oh. Oh. Great shot. Great shot. I. This is my kind of scene, man. I love this. This was really good. Uh, is greatly expanded upon in the War of the Scaleborn novel. Okay. Yeah, this... Oh, man, this is a great relationship. I would have loved to see more of this. There's some amazing shots in here. Let's look at them. Um, I really like this. Lumber in that tight new you would... I like that she just appears and she's like, Yeah, I, I feared this. Um, not clutch mates, the novel describes. They had feelings for each other before Alex Stratza became ordered by the Titans and betrayed Viranoth. Interesting. What's this? Thank you so much. Aaliyah has gone and created a... Thank you. There's still a little bit. Oh, I'm, I'm okay. okay. Thank you so much. Oops. Oh, no. Aaliyah has created another glorious thing. Ah, oh, she's the best man. Another tea. She's keeping me teed up. But yeah, this is an amazing scene. I really like the uh, interaction. Uh, the novel describes they had feelings for each other uh, before Alex Strauss became ordered by the Titans and betrayed Viranoth. Okay. Got it. So, this is a long time ago then. I see. Uh, the Legion's end is all I seek. That's a good point. I can see the parallel. Yeah. So let me ask you then. If you guys didn't read the novel, when you saw the scene, were you like, wait, what? She was her dearest friend? Or did you guys, uh, did you guys know? I knew you would come. Yeah. Great scene. Me? Every word. You said it does. This is great. And I, I really like how they play the scene. Because you can see here, it's like, every word. And then it turns to anger. You said, like, it's a really interesting way to take that line. Look at this. You said it doesn't feel like a victory. Yeah. Not without you. How could you say that? Yeah. After everything, you were my dearest friend. And losing you to this conflict. It's interesting because this scene kind of, it kind of sways me in, uh, in Viranoth's, uh, sort of, uh, sympathy a lot more. And I can see, like, Alex Straza kind of screwed up a lot and also allowed this other horrible act to take place. And it sounds like she's lying. 
Very interesting. And so this just makes for a, a great villain scene. Um, I think this is a good example of like uh, of making a sympathetic villain, but not in the way where it's like, oh, you feel so bad for them and they're so right. They were just misguided. It's like, no, this is a really, um, this is a very complicated sort of, uh, you know, relationship of trust and betrayal. And uh, you know what I mean? It's, it's not just cut and dry like, oh, and then I turned bad. You know what I mean? Vera Knott's only problem was a choice of friends. Yeah, it seems that way. But you know what I mean? Like, it's not so simple. And it's like, oh, and you actually caused the dragon eggs to get all screwed up. So now there's a very believable reason that uh, Vera Knott doesn't trust Alex Straza anymore. It's like, you, you caused some horrible things to happen and betrayed me. So it doesn't really excuse it just by being like, oh, I thought this was right and everything. It's like, no, you did some bad stuff too. So you guys saw it. Uh, some kind of connection could have been there. So there was no clue at the plot to it. Because, well, that's what the only reason I asked is, and I don't know if the novel came out after this came out. It, probably not. It's quite new. But the reason I asked is it's kind of presented as a, as a twist, this scene. And I really like that. I really like that. Um, this is the type of thing we were hoping for with Sylvanas. Uh, oh, you mean you mean with Sylvanas being a bad guy and that sort of writing? Yeah, I really like this sort of sympathetic approach. Uh, never allows us to side with the evil ones, but for some reason they make them more reasonable than our guys. <laughs> yeah, I see what you're saying. No, this is... Uh, there were definitely clues, but it was a surprise. Okay, because yeah, this is presented in a way. It's like it's kind of a plot twist, and I, I love it for that. Broke my heart. Yeah. You promised me you would not force the Titan's will upon us. Yeah. But the eggs, Alex Straza. Yeah, and this you... is this is what I like about it. But the eggs. And look at Alex Straza's response to that. Just pure guilt and disgust, you know? In the sh should never have happened. I think it's quite... Every day, your and... lies have grown sweeter. I mean, this line is great. Come on. Honey to hear. Poison. And poison to taste. Right. Fear enough. You have always fought for the good of dragon. Now this is where the shots get real spicy and fresh in uh, in Vengeance my opinion. I love these shots. And I want to pause a couple times here. Let's see. Still so naive, Alex Straza. And now this is the point where there's a complete disconnection between the characters. And it's presented earlier that maybe they can reconnect. She tries to touch her. She slaps her hand away. Maybe there's a way to reconnect. And then this happens. Believing that the world we Yeah. This he won. shot is so cool. Actually, let me get a little bit closer in the frame, too. I love this shot. It's such a weird, uh, weird framing and composition. It's a, it's a shot I've used in a couple of my pieces as well. Uh, it's very unnerving. It's kind of like they're almost super close face to face but you know there's the space and everything but it does some very interesting things to your mind um it's a very confrontational shot even though it's very intimate so i love it still exists it is gone yeah and then uh, there it is the disconnect it is gone and so yes all that remains love this shot too is vengeance I like this last frame almost. I mean, that's such a cool shot. Um, it's powerful. Vengeance. And at this point, when she says vengeance, she's no longer talking about the past. Uh, there's this turn away. And it has a very cold, I mean, no pun intended, very cold feel to it. And uh, whew, it's just great. I held Alex Strasse experimenting uh, a dragon in the shell, Rathian. Oof. That's rough. Uh, they foreground whichever character has the moral high ground in the narrative. That's a that's a good point, Matt. Uh, there was speculation that never announced. Yeah, really, really cool. I think this is a great direction. And again, this is how you do scenes with villains. Um, what did I say was the strongest scenes in Shadowlands? Do you guys remember? It was Anduin and Sylvanas. You had this back and forth between them. By far the most interesting and compelling to me. And I think that's why a lot of people said the Jailer... Um, it wasn't as easy to connect to him in a, on a human level um, because of his sort of goal and stuff. It wasn't easy to understand until the end. And then it was like, oh, that was his goal. But at that point, he was defeated. Here we have this sort of interplay of like what's right and what's wrong. 
Dang, I kind of agree with Viranoth in this scene. Oh, interesting. Alex Draza kind of might have some big mistakes she made. It's just cool to see. And uh, I really like what they're doing with it. It's fantastic. It's weird to have those novels come out so late. Uh, I remember they used to come before the expansion. Is that how they do it? They usually put them out with the, uh, um, with the expansion. That's awesome. Pitiful. I thought you said pitiful mortals. <laughs> hey, what's up, Brit girl? Welcome to the stream. Uh, Jailer's very first line we heard was pitiful mortal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It instantly puts him on a, uh, which is cool. Like it puts him on a, um, on a sort of like cosmic playing field. I think the only issue is who is the character who would have filled in that, um, what do you call it? The character would have filled in that void of the human connection is, of course, Sylvanas, right? So they could have had Sylvanas doing a lot of scenes like this. And they kind of did, honestly. They had, they had Sylvanas and Anduin, which was really good. I think the only problem was they were really, really particular about holding back Sylvanas's reasoning for what she was doing because they wanted that to be like, for whatever reason, they wanted that to be a really big reveal. Um, but I think the problem with it for a couple, for several viewers was that, um, you know, that, that payoff wasn't enough to justify holding back so much humanity from Sylvanas. And then she's all humanity in zero, um, zero sort of like cosmic motives. It's like, oh, anyway, I, I just, yeah, I feel bad and I want to make up for my stuff now, which I find is an awesome, I love the resolution for Sylvanas. I love what she's doing at this point. She's like in heck, you know, uh, helping all the souls that she wrongfully doomed. I think that's awesome. And I love the stuff with, um, I love this stuff with Anduin. I love this stuff with Taronda. I thought it was all great. And I think a couple more scenes like this is probably all it would have taken um, for everybody to like Sylvanas' arc that much more. I really do. Um, Dragonflight was one of the best WoW expansions story-wise. Yeah, I'm loving it. This is a really fun watch. And uh, I'm getting a lot more sort of like believable human reasoning uh, for what's going on here. And uh, more... Honestly, just just interesting scenes too, just just giving us the time uh, to have interesting scenes like this. Uh, it's two minutes, but man, it feels like a fully integrated movie scene. It really does. Um, yeah. Hopefully, she reunites with Thanos. Um, yeah, that'd be a cool scene. Uh, the jailer doesn't take into account everything that pitiful mortals have accomplished. Yeah. And that's why a lot of you guys said you actually like these villains because they are cautious around the champions, which they definitely should be. Champion is a beast at this point. who's defeated like everybody in their path, no problem. But I love the scene. Really, really great. Definitely one of my favorite ones tonight. We're going to go on to the next one. Uh, Fury Incarnate in Game Cinematic. And it looks like it's going to be including Matt Mercer. So let's check it out. Let's check it out. Little green dragon. Oh no. All alone. I was hunting the aspect of your kind. Great voice. Your dear mother. But no. you will have to do. Yeah, what? See, villains are doing stuff. What They're out in the field do doing want? stuff, you know? I love it. I know what your flight is hiding. Oh no. A fledgling world. Good tree, shot right there. Locked away in Very your threatening. emerald dream. And you are going to take me there. I will never betray my kin. Legend, legend, legend. Let me be clear. I will kill every dragon what? who stands between me and the power in that great tree's uh, heart. This is pre-rendered. Yeah. You can save them. Just let me in. Whoa. Calm yourself, brother. Ooh. We are meant to break the Titans' iron grip on this world. Good cop, bad cop. Not steal their children's future. It's good cop, bad as cop. As they did ours. I was just offering this whelp a chance to serve our cause. Yeah. 
and spare his people a gruesome, yet delightful massacre. No. <laughs> no. Stop it. For rock. For rock. Dang. Okay. This is awesome. She actually is attacking him. Whoa, okay. I really like this. What? Brother. A battle. Remember what we are fighting for. Whoa. Pretty. So be it. This is awesome. I'll find another way into their precious dream. Whoa. And then the power that grows within. What a scene, man. That was awesome. I love this. Yeah, this is how you do villains, man. A confrontation Thank between you. infighting. This is specifically the payoff we needed for this character after the last scene, showing that she is virtuous. She's not just evil person doing evil things. Really cool scene. Man, that flew by in a, in a second. The power. Fantastically done. Uh, there's a lot of cool shots here. I really like this shot um, right here. It was quite early. Yeah, you see the tail go by, and it has just such a threatening air to it. Check it this. A flight is hiding. A fledgling world tree. Isn't that great? The guy seems so helpless. It's like, oof. Locked. Are going to take me there. It's also great too because this shot. You know, we're looking at a sort of dragon visage. Um, you know, with horns and big ears and stuff, but he still looks very human comparatively to this guy. And you have Matt Mercer here, who's just, he looks like an alien. He looks like a monster. You know, it's its terrifying. So I love this scene for that reason, too. It, it's very uh, relatable. So. I, my kin. Titans, I. And then this is just such a great scene. Like I said, you, you get the payoff for like, is she just, you know, full of baloney? No, she's a virtuous person trying to do what's right. Um, we're here to take it from the Titans, not to just kill everybody. Like, what? And this is amazing. Because this is where he's like, you can tell he is ready to snap, man. He is ready to snap. Because she just kind of like, you know, it's more of like a stop. She's not trying to kill him right here. And then he goes full power, like, I'm going to burn you to a crisp. He is unhinged, man. See? Like, what? Brother, remember what we are. I want to note right here. So, I also want to note that Farak is winning in this standoff. Like, look what's happening. Her shield has like collapsed, and uh, it's like okay, he, kind of like in a Gohan versus Cell sort of way, is winning this Kamehameha competition, you know. And uh, brother, remember crazy. what we are. So cool, and thank you, Tholos, for the five. Tholos, thank you so much for the five. When Farak says, "Let me in." You hear Farak's voice speaking to the green dragon and another voice speaking to Farak. We gotta go check that out. Let's go listen in. Thank you so much for the five though laws. I appreciate it. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go listen to exactly what you said. Let's see. Yeah. You can save them. Just let me in. Calm yourself, bro. Yeah, there was a lot of cool vocal effects there. Not just the reverb. There was a kind of a... His voice changed. There's like a weird affectation on it that definitely seemed like something else was going on. Yeah, good catch. Good catch, though loss. Thank you. But I love it. Fighting for... Solid scene. Thank you. And then, yeah, the thank you is met with a kind of indifference. Um, interesting scene. And it's almost like she doesn't want to get too close or, you know, 
really view them as equals, but she doesn't want to massacre these people. It's, it's not her style either. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. Let him in. Um, all right. Fury Incarnate launch trailer. Okay, so... I see. This was like the, the different cinematic and this is the trailer for it. All right, let's check it out. I'm pumped. It's probably going to be like we said. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. Another preview. Yep. Love it. I know what your flight is hiding. And you are going to take me there. He's so great. Just let, let me in. Yeah, you can hear a different voice. It's awesome. Whoa! The Void Lords are all these scheming. Heritage armor? Dude! Classic Alliance armor? Dawn of the Infinite. Oh man. Brother, remember what I love it. we are fighting for. Yeah. Lovely scene. That was definitely one of the coolest. Again, I love how they're just they're really utilizing the villains and, and giving them screen time, giving different uh, scenarios. I'm getting to see personalities like pitted against each other and kind of play off each other as opposed to just like um, big bad guys sitting in his, you know, sitting in his uh, lair waiting to do his thing, kind of... Um, talking a lot about his his bad plans and stuff you know doesn't really ever do it i feel like these guys are out in the field doing stuff and it's it's really cool yeah forsaken and night elf heritage armor so when they say heritage armor is that just like uh remastered armor from the old days or what does that mean exactly because like if it's already in the game or do they mean stuff from like warcraft 3 or a different game warcraft 1 Yeah, looks like a blast, this one. I play Horde. All right, Black Wolves. I love Horde, man. I'm I'm definitely going to make characters in both, no matter what I choose. So. Gotta get a taste. New armor. Sets race specific. Ah, I see. So they say heritage. Oh, I get it. So you mean it's just the heritage of the armor. I, th I thought it was like specifically, you know, armor that had a heritage. Okay, yeah. That's great, yeah. Got it. Who does care for Dragon Kind? I think she's just... Yeah, I I love what's going on with Viranoth, and I'm I'm really looking forward to what happens next. So, let's do it. That was an awesome patch trailer, and now we are on, uh, Ferak argues Viranoth in game cutscene. Sounds about right, after that last one, right? Let's continue. Behold, sister, the burning might Whoa. of our new allies. Who the? What have you done to this creature? Oh, no. Imbued it with the living flame. Oof. The very flame we will infuse into the heart of their precious world tree. What? The Riddicron entrusted us to deny the aspects their prize. What? Not twist it into some vile abomination. Yeah, what? The Riddicron isn't here anymore. Oh. Besides, he is the one who set me free. Who begged me to yeah. drink deep of the Shadow Flame. Okay. He knew what was necessary to win this war. Interesting. We took up arms together to free the world from the Titans meddling. I love this. Yeah. That is the war I fight. Yeah, what is he even That doing? is the victory I seek. We cannot achieve victory with our hands bound by your ideals. Uh, what the heck is that? Indeed. Then our course is set. All right, good response. Good response. Indeed, you can't. Yeah, 
That was awesome. I really like it, and I love how they set it up already with how um, sort of like a short fuse, no pun intended, short fuse he has, but also in the last scene where he kind of snapped because she's like, can we not murder innocents? What? <laughs> it's like, what do you mean? So I think it's really cool. Um, and I love how it seems like he's kind of, like the brighter he burns, he loses more of his, you know, he's losing his restraint, to, to put it lightly. And that was a great argument. I also like how she, in my opinion, in that scene was kind of like, all right, I've accepted what he's going to do. So now let's just, with that information, keep going. There's no reason to fight him right now, right? That's her brother. Let's just let him do his thing, and I'm going to do my own thing. So I think it's great. Uh, next, we have Viranoth comes to Valdrican. Interesting. Hopefully some more interactions here. Be really powerful. Yes. I will speak with your dragon queen. Love it. Then speak. Okay. No doubt you are aware of what my brother is after. Awesome. Every gateway to the Emerald Dream has been secured. Okay. And is well defended. Huh. It is not a gate he seeks. With the Druids of the Flame at his side, Farak will tear his way into that realm okay. and march his forces upon the World Tree. His forces? What? They will fail. This yeah. World is. Tree will not be burned. Burn it. He comes to claim it. To twist its pure heart into Ooh. a mirror of what his own has become. Cruel, blazing with insatiable malice, yeah. and wreathed in shadow. I cannot stand with him. Great music. He is my brother no more. So Fear what's she enough. gonna do? Do what you will with this knowledge. Farewell, Alexstrasza. Interesting. Stand with us. Interesting. <laughs> Why would I do that? Come on. Because you are a protector of this world. Yeah. And you do not want to see it burn. Yeah. <sighs> Please, hear me now. Yes, I know I made mistakes, but come on. I failed you before. I failed our people. Let me make it up, yeah. This is yes. great. You did. I will not fail them again. Yeah. Stand with us, Viranoth. For all dragon kind. Great scene. Come on. Come on, come on, yes! Great scene. I really like it, yeah. I have to say, like, it was believably done, too. Um, I like that uh, it wasn't just like, anyways, I'll be on your side now. Um, you know, there's a lot of... Uh, there's a lot of subtlety in what happened. It's not as simple as like, you know, Alex Strauss says evil and everything. But I, I like that the slow, no pun intended, thawing of what's going on here. <laughs> because what happens is Viranoth comes in and is like very initially, um, initially cold. Don't say it. <laughs> and then, uh, and I'm not even meaning to say this. And then what happens is throughout the scene that like she comes in and she says, I'll speak with the dragon queen. Alex Strasser comes out, talks to her, says, you know, please, please stand with us. And then she says, farewell, Alex Strasser. It says her name. So it goes from uh, formal, disconnected, to personal. So it's like she's already remembering, oh, this is my friend. Right? This is my friend. I've had to kind of go to... <laughs> I've kind of had to go uh, through a lot and, you know, feel betrayed and stuff. But let's be honest. Alex Strasser isn't some evil freak, and you can see that, right? Viranoth can see that. Who is an evil freak, who wants to just destroy stuff indiscriminately. Uh, his, what's his name? Uh, 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 Thorak. He's actually evil. I'm going to just twist and destroy shit and, and burn people. As a, crazy. Uh, pardon my language. And it's like, what the heck? So I love that the scene slowly becomes, you know. And wreathed in shadow. Slowly, slowly thaws out. And this, this is the part. This is the part where Alex Straza has really good sort of uh, negotiation skills or people skills. And look what she does. She instantly catches that uh, personal personal touch when she says her name. And she's like, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to chase it down. I'm going to chase it down. 
Farewell, yeah. Alex Straza. Stand with us. Yeah. See, it's like that one chance. Stand with us, please. And then she hesitates. She hesitates. She doesn't keep walking to say, why would I do that? I think it's so awesome. Why would I do that? Because you are a protector of this world. And you do not... I, I think the voice acting is incredible in this scene. I don't know what people are talking about. It's probably just uh, dub haters. Like, uh, it, it's classic. A lot of people listen to... Uh, this is coming from someone who loves anime, loves uh, listening to sub, loves listening to the dub, love voice acting in any language. Um, a lot of people who don't like, uh, they'll say English dub. I prefer to watch it in the original. Dub stinks and everything. I don't watch it in my own language. That's insane. Um, a lot of these people, they'll be like, the acting's better in Japanese. And it's like, do you speak Japanese? No. Then like, how do you know if the, you don't even know what word is <laughs> And, uh, you know, and also say the dub is too extreme in the American uh, when, in fact, the Japanese is much more stilted, is much more, you know, fun and kind of like heightened and uh, and kind of like big, 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 big and, and just the style of, of anime. And uh, yeah, it's, it's nonsense. You know, you, you should be able to appreciate any performances, obviously, in stuff where there is a facial capture performance or a live recorded performance, like in a film, it is better to watch it in the original language because you're seeing the actor's performance. You want to hear the actor's performance as well. And something like this, this is not a human being. This is a game, right? And this is also a game that was uh, created in English. So it's very, very odd to say the English dub of Warcraft. It's not a dub. It's just it's Warcraft. <laughs> like what? So yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because, you know, there are necessary evils that has to happen. Very quick tangent here. We'll get back to it. But uh, it's, it's, it's cool. And you'll see me, guys, you'll see me do this sometimes. You'll, you'll notice sometimes I turn off subtitles when I'm watching stuff, especially on the rewatch. Why do I do that? So what happens is when you're looking at subtitles, you're not able to engage with the composition, how it was designed. So for example, in this shot, your eye is supposed to be drawn to the primary subject, Alex Straza. This isn't the best example. Let's find a better shot. Um, that one's too easy, but um, let's see. Mm, this one's okay. Uh, it would be better to explain with a moving shot, but anyway. So your eyes are supposed to be drawn to the focal point being right here, her eyes, okay? She's on the upper left third. Um, not exactly on it, but you know, kind of close to this intersection over here on the, on the rule of thirds. Uh, it's just film science. So what happens is when I'm going down, my eyes are darting down to the subtitles several times and for several seconds, yes, it takes time to read. A lot of people say, oh, I can read it subconsciously. No, you can't. You, I don't care how fast you read. <laughs> your, your eyes are disengaging with the composition. You're not able to feel it. So the example I use is like if you were in an art museum looking at an amazing painting and you were like, ooh, have you ever been to an art museum? Like you're just looking at a painting or even you know looking at any art piece on your phone, however, however you see it. And, you know, I mentioned museum because some of these are monumental, beautiful pieces, like say in the, um, you know, several of the museums throughout the world. So you'll be there. Imagine being in a museum. Just, you get lost in the composition. You say, wow. Oh, my goodness. You're feeling what the artist was trying to make you feel. And imagine, like, as you're looking at this painting, there was, like, a bunch of flashing lights. All over. We're like, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, got it. Okay. Uh, yep. And you just kept having to, like, look away for a second and then look at the composition. Then look at it. The, 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 okay, okay. You're not, like, yet yeah, you're seeing the composition, but you're not able to rest. Um, and your eyes in this shot, again, not the best example. It's not, it's not an incredibly dynamic shot. Your eyes are meant to be able to rest in certain shots, to be able to follow movement in other shots. Uh, your eyes are meant to be drawn in other ways and to, to really look into the character's performance, the subject's performance in other ways, in other shots. There's a rhythm to the edit, as I've explained a lot, how you how we edit um, in, in post-production and everything. That's all gone with subtitles because, you know, you're looking up and down and stuff. So there are necessary evils, right? For example, if you're watching, uh, you know, uh, like a film from Japan that was shot with Japanese actors, like, yeah, you should be watching and, and listening to their performance with subtitles, right? Um, so there are necessary evils. Uh, but, of course, there are also ways where you can say turn off subtitles and uh, and enjoy it when you can so like if you speak english you should turn off english subtitles <laughs> if, if the thing is in english you should turn off english subtitles then you're just 
kind of having a redundant uh, uh, experience and you're not uh, able to look at it. And if you're having trouble, having trouble hearing, uh, maybe upgrade your sound system or just like raise the volume or something. So anyways, that's my, that's my spiel on that. But you'll see me, I, I truly dislike turning on subtitles for the things. I try to be considerate though, especially on the first watch. Um, obviously there's some people that are hard at hearing. Uh, maybe some people who don't even are, have to watch it on mute and want to just have subtitles. So I try to turn them on when I can, but from a filmmaking standpoint, you, you generally don't want to have them. Composition is the conduit of what art communication through the media. That's true. Campfire, yeah. Subtitles are a mixed bag because Blizzard has stepped them up massively because of accessibility. Good. Yeah, that's great. Uh, always trade-offs because yeah yeah exactly and they make your eyes stray they also give your eyes fatigue you got to be darting your eyes around um, one of the reasons that streaming is so hard <laughs> is actually because of eye fatigue um, I'm looking at chat I'm reading chat I'm down I gotta go over here I gotta go over here I gotta, uh, I gotta hit my um, soundboard I gotta type into something I gotta look up that that monitor this monitor that chat this chat oh there, 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 you know it, it's very um, fatiguing for the eyes that's probably the honestly probably the hardest part of streaming um, that can mentally fatigue you is, is eye movement. Yeah. So, uh, it's, it's definitely designed to, uh, with composition, you know, to keep you right there and give your eyes a break. Uh, I play without sound by choice. Nice. That's really cool. Shay. Yeah. Be a considerate housemate. Exactly. So that's a perfect time to have subtitles on. Like there's definitely times for it. <laughs> yeah. Um, Ganoa, um, fantastic. I got an impressionist painting, the road leading to the Arc de Triomphe. It's gorgeous with incredible. There you go. See, that's a perfect example of a painting that it's like, I'm going to sit here and look at this for like 10 minutes and just take it in and not be distracted. Yeah. And this is why I do this channel pretty much. I love talking about art. It's literally what I do all the time in my life. I figure why not <laughs> talk about it um, with you guys and have a really good time and celebrate stuff that you've seen. Uh, try to bring a greater appreciation for the stuff that you like but this is it man i uh the power of art is is has defined my entire life it's the training that i've done it's the work that i've done with my artwork with my film and now i love talking about other people's stuff and you know telling you guys some of the tricks they might have used but also just reveling in it and in, you know letting myself feel what they intended as well it's a blast um me and Aaliyah watched last night by the way you got to see this. Me and Aaliyah watched last night uh, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. Uh, if you haven't seen Pinocchio, it's incredible. Um, wow. It's wooden puppets. Incredible. It's a masterpiece. It's very, very moving. It's very, very sad if you haven't seen it. Um, and it's kind of the perfect example of, you know, yes, human art is like the most beautiful thing. Like, it, it's so incredible what humans can achieve when they put hard work and kind of different minds come together in a collaborative process. The art that you can achieve is, is absolutely mind-blowing and, uh, and moving. And if you see how they made this, absolutely ridiculous. So uh, I fully recommend it if you haven't seen it. Beautiful, moving, emotional, tragic story um, based on the original uh, written work of Pinocchio. Oh, incredible. But uh, yeah, it's fantastic. Art is art is everything, man. <laughs> Pretty much anything Del Toro does. Yeah, exactly. Anything he touches is amazing. Um, but I would say particularly if you liked uh, some of his other work, um, you may have seen Pan's Labyrinth. If uh, It's probably one of his most well-known works. Uh, it's very similar with some of the themes. But it deals with mortality uh, quite profoundly, in my opinion. It was fantastic to watch. Yeah. But uh, yeah, just just another reminder that like I love artwork, I love artists, and uh, yeah, that's whose uh, that's whose opinion matters to me. Anyways, let's keep watching. Fantastic stuff. Ah, no. Alice, and wreathed in shadow, I cannot stand with him. He is my brother no more. Vera North. Do what you will with this knowledge. This is the part I talked about. Farewell, Alex Straza. Slips into the personal right there. Slips into the personal and all of a sudden it's like, oh, I have an opening. Great. Our people. Yes. You did. 
And listen, that, that takes a big leader to be like, I completely failed. I'm not going to do it again. And I think that was a really cool way to show the... Uh, will not fail them. The convincing. And I'm really curious what's going to happen with Viranoth now. Um, I kind of hope she sticks around. Uh, I could also see a tragic end for her uh, coming up in the writing. But we'll see what happens. Very curious. A fantastic scene. I loved it. Pan's Labyrinth is amazing. Uh, mm -hmm. Lullaby only. Oh yeah, it's it's great and terrifying and all those great things. <laughs> a crown of flame. There we go. Seventy nine guys. We're on number seventy nine and barreling down the uh, the pipeline here. My Whoa. brother believed he could control me. This okay. Rage inside my heart. This is my sister. Rock. Believed she could tame me. Ooh. My fury Whoa. will not be sated. The aspects Whoa. believed they could imprison no. me. No! The runes! But my hatred cannot be contained. Wait, 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 wait. They know what is coming. Dude, this sounds like Burning Let Crusade. Unyielding flame. Or uh, Cataclysm. Draws closer, ever closer. The boys. The team. I love this. They cling to one another. Tyrande. Oh, this is epic. Lost in their dream. This is great. Deceived by the Ooh, nice color grading on this. Really nice color grading on that. Why are you disrespecting the new blade, man? Pick it up. Pick it up. So it falls to me to make them pay. What axe? Holy mama! Wait, what? That was wild. Yeah, that was really cool. He cleaves... Uh, he uh, he pulled the Sephiroth right here. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> he pulled the Sephiroth in this scene. I don't know if anybody knows Final Fantasy VII. But this move right here... Slicing a... Uh, slicing a piece through... And like creating a door. I don't know what you call it. Uh, that's a Sephiroth move right there. And we love that. <laughs> that was really cool. What axe? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, cut open a portal. Sephiroth does this in uh, Final Fantasy VII. I love it. Suffering. And it's a really cool way to instantly show, you know, how strong this new weapon is. It's like, oh no. You can get that axe in game. I love that. Of course we know Sephiroth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys know. Um, so much fun. So much fun. The runes on his axe are from the Firelands, the elemental plane of fire, reminiscent of Ragnaros. Oh, awesome. I don't believe you. It doesn't exist, says Drunk Duck. Okay. Farak does not seek a gate. Yeah, I thought that was really cool. It's like, yeah, anyway, he's in there. Because they said, what was it? These gates are sealed. Eh, he doesn't really care about anything that was sealed or anything at all, really. He just doesn't care. In theory, you can get the axe. What axe? If there, if there was an axe, theoretically, you could get it. But there's no axe. Got it. It's a legendary. Sephiroth is the second best FF villain. If you're going to say Kefka is the best, I'm going to disagree with you. Though I love Kefka. I don't think he's the best. Uh, you can get the axe. No, you can't. <laughs> I, I laugh so much when there's like in-game jokes like this. <laughs> where like... A lot of you guys will be disagreeing with each other, and it's just so awesome to see. Like, the, the culture runs so deep. The axe is invisible in the game files until it drops. That's so funny. I'm unconvinced. 
Ay, ay, ay. Kafka's the best. I love Kafka, but um, I think he's very one-dimensional, which is is the point of Kafka. He's not like they tried and couldn't make him otherwise. Um, I just think, like, uh, it's like we were talking about earlier. Like, I, a more human uh, character can be a lot more engaging, but we'll talk more about that when we're playing Final Fantasy. Um, Kuja. Kuja's a great villain. Uh, not my favorite, but a great villain in a great game. Uh, Seymour is a great villain as well. I think Seymour is a very underrated villain. He's fantastic. So cool. So creepy. Athena says Emmett from 14. Great choice. Great choice. A lot of people love him. Um, I would say Arden. Arden's great too. 15. Voiced by Darren DePaul, who's in World of Warcraft. Anyways, we'll get into the FF villains on an FF stream, but this was awesome. I love this scene. Um, really cool montage. I talk about this a lot. Um, it's great to have a montage when you can to go pre-render because what happens here, we have a massive world with a lot of people in it. A lot of characters to manage. So this section right here is so cool. I love this. Flame. Keep your villains. I'll keep Vincent. I may or may not be cosplaying a certain character soon. That's all I'll say. Anyways. Draws closer. This is awesome. To, to have a world this big and this many characters, it's great to use this uh, at times. I think it's great. Um, I love Sephiroth. He's one of my favorites. Vayne Solidor is great. Vayne is a fantastic villain. FF12. Super under... It's the most underrated game for a while. Uh, Kefka is the Joker of FF. Yeah. And it's interesting because being uh, the Joker of FF could mean something very different depending on if you like Batman or not. <laughs> That's all I'll say. <laughs> Ever closer. Even now. Yeah. To one I love it. And we're getting some really artistic shots in here. Tyrande just sh sh sharpening that thing. Um, also, ring. where we left Tyrande, it's kind of in a bad place. So I love this shot. The dark. Lost in there. And, and listen, I know those rhomboids and that Latizimus dorsi anywhere based on Aaliyah. That is Tyrande. Um, but I love it. It feels like a movie scene. You're getting to see everybody. Uh, it's helping me and everyone else in the audience manage all the characters in a really cool way. And this is the power of a montage, especially in a world this big. It's fantastic. I mean, a montage can work in a story with two characters, <laughs> or even one character, I suppose. Uh, this is really powerful for that reason. Abyssian's new armor is dope. It was cool. Let's go back and see Abyssian. He was there for a shot. Right here. Yeah, really cool armor. And this is, of course, Abyssian has taken his place as the leader of the Black Dragons, right? Yeah. Uh, I thought Druids of the Flame was supposed to be playable. Did I miss that? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure. But anyway, this is great. Uh, I love it. It also feels like this could be the end to an episode of TV where it's like, he cut through, what's he going to do? This is crazy. I think it's so fun. Yeah. And I love how, like, where every step is art just burning, and it's like, oh boy, we're in for something. We're in for something here. This is going to be kind of crazy, you know? I think I think it's great. <laughs> Fantastic scene, guys. How are we doing here? We are on. We are on this. I think number eighty. We're on number eighty. Let's watch this quick. Is that thrall? Thrall. Believed they could imprison me. Yeah. But my hatred cannot be contained. So good. Voice, man. Matt Mercer killing it. Prepare for the last stand. All of Azeroth stands united. Defend the Emerald Dream. We cannot allow cool. the tree to fall to him. I love it. I have opened the dreamways for you. Super Bloom! Amazing. Amazing. Protect the world tree! The heart of the 
all of Azeroth shall burn. Whoa. The rock must be stopped, no matter the cost. Their suffering has just begun. Azeroth has Amazing. answered us. Defenders of the dream. Fight to save our world. Draw. My fury will not Draw. be sated. So good, yeah, I love it. That was fantastic. Really cool, uh, really cool setup. This is looking like a serious expansion patch. My bestie Lillian, yeah. Animal Dream is such a beautiful zone. It seems like it. Fantastic, yeah. Really, really good stuff. All right, guys. What we're gonna do is we have I think like 16, 16 left or something like that. We're really, uh, we're really getting there. So for now, we're about two hours into the stream. Let's take a quick break, and then we're gonna finish this, man. This is crazy, I can't even believe it. If you're just joining, this is our final night. Crazy to say, of in-game cinematics for World of Warcraft. Very, very excited um, to see how this ends, and then we're gonna be playing together in the game, yes. <clears throat> it's gonna be great. And uh, so that's gonna be it. We're gonna take a quick break, okay? Quick break, grab your snacks, grab your drinks. All right, we have a great time coming up to finish this off and we'll get back to it. My friends, get a stretch break in as well. And uh, this is the home stretch. I'm so excited. I will talk to you guys in a minute. Go take a break myself. All right, friends, be back in a second.
unmuted. Welcome back, friends. Is that an ogre I see? Welcome, guys. It's great to have you. If you're just joining, this is it. This is the final push of our in-game cinematics. We got about 15 or 16 left. We are blasting through them, and it's been such a good time. Um, really good stuff tonight. Really juicy content tonight. Yeah, and I want to hear about everybody's snacks. I don't have any yet, but I might later. And uh, you guys are the absolute best. I want to hear about it. What are you drinking? What are you eating? Anyone played Warcraft Rumble? No. Is it like Smash Bros? Yeah, thank you so much, guys. Uh, we're going to do some viewer choice probably after we finish these. And then uh, we got some great stuff on the way, including playing Warcraft. So um, I'd love to hear about it. <sighs> Final push, Archimedes. How you doing? Yeah. Also, like I said, check out uh, me and Aaliyah's couples channel, which we recently launched. We're really excited about it. And um, good stuff happening. Tequila in a fruit bar, corn nuggets and coconut flavored sparkling water, kielbasa, cereal and tea. Starcraft, I've seen one, Helena, it was awesome. Pizza, what kind? I just ate some quesadillas. Chocolate covered cherry soda and cherry cake donut. Ooh. Clash Royale, some mobile game. Pumpkin muffins, chai tea, crab stuffed salmon and a Negroni. I posted a pot roast with my Instant Pot. Nice! Uh, I mashed sweet potatoes with butter and some Baja Blast. Amazing! Hot chocolate milk with whipped cream and cookies. What? That's awesome! Just finished chili and cornbread. Walk around the island. The kitchen island. I accidentally did a 12 mile. Wow. Pierogies and a couple of fried eggs for dinner. Alright, Michelle. Hearthstone Cinematic. I actually did. Uh, I haven't done a whole stream yet. Maybe though. That'd be really fun. Chicken noodle soup from scratch. Love it. Cantaloupe chunks and whipped cream. All right. Cold water and chocolate. I don't know what that is. Please explain. That sounds super interesting. I had roasted chicken and broccoli. Just a whiskey and shrimp salad and sandwich. All right, Carro. Cheez Its and an energy drink. Just finished an all meat calzone and cheese sticks. Wow, I nuke some black beans and dip tortilla chips in it. That's what I'm talking about, right there. Salt and vinegar crisps and wine, all right, okay. Uh, I'll go through Starcraft, I would love to, yeah. Chicken curry, rice, no snacks, only wow. That's that's the way to do it, Abby. <laughs> Don Don noodles, wait. That's that's some good stuff, Black Death. That's some good stuff, Don Don noodles, yeah. That's really good stuff. I know exactly what you're talking about, too. It's hard to get, depending on what part of the world you're in. I'll have that Hearthstone list for you tomorrow. All right, Jerry. Supper cooking. I think people might have added Hearthstone stuff to the viewer list, too. So we might be covering it. Supper's cooking. Awesome, Deeps. What are you cooking? Finish some fried chicken and drinking Dr. Pepper. All right, Angela. Uh, walnut, pecan, loaf, and oat milk espresso topped with vanilla, cold foam, and caramel drizzle. Holy mama, pie's got it all. Pie has got it all. That's amazing. Phil, would you enjoy the Warcraft Arclight Rumble intro video? Oh, there's, a, there's an intro? Cool. Thank you, Denny. Trying to decide between chimichangas or ramen. My snacks are soup. Good choice, Chaotica. Homemade. Oh, nice one, Black Death. That's a good stuff right there. Um... Kekshalad is a sweetest chocolate, like wafers and chocolate cream and tightly packed layers. Bang, pie, now I need to make banana bread tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, there you go, right? I would love a huge steak, mashed potato. <laughs> uh, when do you pretend to start playing it? When do I pretend to start playing it right now? Awesome. <laughs> no, I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play within a week. Um, within a week, we will be playing. Absolutely, yeah. I have to uh, move to my other setup in the other room. I'm gonna do that, and uh, we're gonna do Warcraft Community Night to celebrate with you guys. It's gonna be a blast. Me and Aaliyah, we're gonna do that with you guys, and then we are going to do um, yeah, just set up. You guys are gonna help me set it up. It's gonna take a little bit of time to make all the stuff, do the guild, um, kind of like uh, housekeeping stuff, and then that's it. I could make a Warcraft spin-off playlist for Hearthstone. That could be really fun. Yeah, that could be really fun, Akaria. Did you ever watch 15 Minutes, Years of Warcraft? Uh, I did the 15... Wait, was it 15 or was it 20 years? I did one that was amazing. Yeah. 
It was really good. Incredible edit. Oh, okay. So there's a separate one for 15. I get it. I get it. Awesome. Very exciting, guys. So yeah, let's get back to it. Um, we got more to cover, and it's just going by in a heartbeat. What an absolute blast. Dang, I'm gonna have to resub. That's right. Yeah, get in there. The Philidari march soon. Yeah, don't worry, Coma. Um, we'll know within a few days. The the Discord and everybody's gonna be helping me out ASAP. Like, very, very soon. And I'll be... I will be releasing that information very widely once it's all set up. Like, it's not gonna be kept a secret. I'm gonna be doing YouTube community posts. Like, we're in here. We're in that server. We got this guild. We got this thing. It's all gonna be out there. And there's gonna be at least a couple days of like that information being out there before we start it's it's not going to be how we usually do it where it's like yeah i'll be live in like five hours or ten hours or whatever it's going to be you have a lot of time i want i really want to make this a big fun uh community event like when we play together so um same thing with community night community night is coming soon yeah i'll let you know when yeah it's hard to have to coordinate with Leah, but we're doing that asap that will be awesome. I can't wait. Don't forget to hit the like button. Yeah, guys, thanks for all the likes on the stream and the views. Incredible. So nice to have you guys here, man. Like I said, this journey has been really special. Uh, would be awesome so we can be prepared, maybe level together. Yeah, yeah, that's the plan. Don't worry. It's it's not going to be uh, last minute. I want everybody to get a chance to be a part of that first night. Yeah, just give me a little time. I, I'm new to the game. I need to like do all the back end work. And um, the community is going to be helping me. If you want to help out with that, Hop in the Discord, guys, if you want to be kind of in on all that stuff, um, setting it up and, and answering questions if I have them, that's the place to be. Is there a discussion of a community guild? Yes, absolutely. You got a lot of snow coming down, hot dog? That's crazy. We made it over 100 likes. Ah, oh, you guys are the best. Thank you so much. It helps, it helps a lot, guys, with the algorithm. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um... Helena already liked the video. That's why you're a legend. All right, guys. Let's get back to it. Very, very excited. Let's finish this, shall we? WoW channel or another, Kiritasu? Um, I don't know. Just a couple of days ago. Was in there. Yeah, very, very excited. All right, guys. Let's do it. Continuing our amazing list. I'll pause the music here. As glorious as it is. And let's get back to it. So we're back on our reaction setup here. Uh, we are on, as far as I can tell. Emerald Dream Tree Fly Through in Game Cinematic. It's going to be good. Oh, a specific channel for it? It's probably going to be in the Warcraft channel, um, or the general. That's all, yeah. That's all. I'll, I'll be I'll be needing a lot of help. <laughs> so, like, yeah, it's it's going to be pretty prominent conversation, I would think. Uh, I won't just be like, yo, this or that, guys. Like, I'll probably be like, all right, I'm going to need help on this if anybody wants to get in on it. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Angela says, I love this community and all the people here and on Discord. I will be getting married in exactly a week and a half. Wow! That's amazing, Angela. Congratulations. Please, you know, let us know how it goes and, you know, we'll be celebrating. We'll, we'll wish you uh, congratulations. Absolutely. That's incredible. Yeah, I, man, it's awesome. It's really nice to have, like, a positive community like you guys, um, you know, for stuff like that, too. It's really great. Love seeing everybody support each other and celebrate. I want to thread at least. Yeah, that's a good idea. We're in the end game now, guys. All right, here we go. This next one is about 30 seconds. Very short. Let's check it out and see what they got for us. Uh, the guy video I linked to you in Discord, uh, Dragon's Channel. Yeah, yeah, definitely Costco. I'll, I might not watch that on stream just because it's so long. Maybe I'll skim through it. But um, probably after this stream, when I'm in the mindset of like setting up WoW, I'll be looking at that. Thank you so much. Yeah, very excited for you, Angela. All right, let's get into it. Behold, a new Drusilla. Wow, that's beautiful. A new world tree, soon to bloom and be born into Azeroth. 
So this is the seed that was growing, right? I know that voice. Until the tree crosses over into our world. Thank you so much. Oh my goodness, Aaliyah has brought me a sweet treat. We must defend the single No, we must save them. No. Really cool. Okay, that was a really nice uh, that was a really nice setup. Very short. Uh, nothing too crazy going on. I love the sort of reveal. Um, and now we have Farak the Prophet, the tree. Farak the Prophet, the tree. Let's click on this because I don't know what's going on. And we got a minute and a half to uh, see what goes on here. Let's see. Volume's low. Okay, I'll crank it up. Is that better? I knew you would come. That's his dragon form. Oh, no. Chasing fire like glittering moths. Whoa. Oh, how I have longed for you to witness it, Alex Terrasa. No. This world tree, the heart of its great power, filled with shadow and flame. But now that you and your champions have gathered... The dream team. Why wait? I should just end you now. The defeat of this treacherous queen would be a glorious battle. Who's that guy? But the plan, Thurok. Remember your brilliant plan to humble, no. humiliate, and break them? Open the way to the temple. Hmm. Then the tree will be yours. Die! Yes! And once I take what is mine... He's like confused. My foes will perish in flames! You notice that? Defeat! He's like almost seems confused. He's like so uh, lost in his in his fury and stuff. He's like, hey, do you remember your plan? And then he's kind of like, oh yeah, that's right, my plan. <laughs> like, dude, he's so far gone with anger. Yeah, this is Matt Mercer. Yeah. Oh, the other guy? Okay. I love this. Frog is kind of dumb, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he seems like he's um he seems like he's losing himself more and more. Like seriously. It's insane. <clears throat> Farag is Alex and he's Sarah's cousin. That's cool. Anger driven, yeah. I think it's great. The shadow flame. Yeah, he was saying the shadow flame. <clears throat> mm hmm. The shadow flame corrupted him. He ate that stuff up like cereal. Oh, wow. That's such a funny thing to say. Mm, mm, mm. That's good. Yeah. Lost in the sauce. Yeah. Did Mercer voice half of this expansion? <laughs> I think he did. It's it's amazing too. Um, uh, yeah, I thought I think this is amazing. Really, really cool. Uh, he's 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 consumed. I think is the word that we're looking for here. He's consumed by the power, and um, you know he's he's slowly losing it. This is a minute long one called Prophet of the Flame, guys. There's only there's only a few more to left to watch. Let's check it out. I see Taronda. I'm pumped. Behold. I bless you with the embers of Ragnaros. We must ensure Farak makes way for the new Fire Lord. A crown of flame will reign over Azeroth. Okay. You all have seen the destruction caused by Tyrande. She refused to join us in the restoration of our people's immortality. These lies poison my people against me. 
She would bring a tree of death into the world, condemning the Kaldori to the Shadowlands. Traitors! Traitors! Apostates! Yes! This madness ends here! Drop them, Taranda! Drop them! I love that. <laughs> you gonna see some controversial cinematics? What? Oh, wait, I think it ended. Sorry. Yeah, I wasn't ready for that. I love it. It's really cool. Um, Taranda is great. I, like I said a million times, there's so many great characters, you know. Uh, when they utilize them all, I am, I smile. Farag is kind of slow in the head, yeah. <laughs> Yara says this is secretly a... <laughs> this is secretly just a campaign for... <laughs> a campaign of critical role. I could see that. Hello, Honeycut. How you doing? All right, assault on Wellspring in game cinematic. Let's see. Let's check it out. Ooh, man, he's so scary the way he waste was. precious time. Dreamrender could cleave this barrier in an instant. Yeah. Is this simple task too much for you? Once the Wellspring is filled with flame. Charlene. My flames. It will set the entire realm ablaze. Then, through that tree, all Azeroth will burn. Oh, no. Yet you would have me squander my power to make up for your failures. I, I only thought... Forgive me. We will bring this barrier down. No. You will not. Oh, no. Wow. Roasted him. Roasted him. Who's the guy with the big orange hands? Wow. Roasted him. Madness. Sheer madness, guys. We are so close to the end. We are so close to the end. The tide turns in game cinematic. There we go. Alex Traza in view. Whoa. Well done, champion. Now we must die. What? No. Alex oh! Oh! Oh, it popped her out of her dragon form. It seems your reign is finished. Oh! Alex Terraza. You once fought for an ideal for Rock. Oh, he's not one now, to be reasoned with. You merely seek power. <laughs> yes. And you are in my way. Damn, he agreed. Amirdrasil will never be yours. Your obsession will destroy you. Oh, this is your end, Alexstrasza. The Dragon Queen. No. Dies alone. No. I am not alone. It's gonna be the ice. <laughs> What the heck is that? Who is that? Thrall? What the? Do you not see? Who is that? All of Azeroth stands united against you. Jaina? Jaina! It is time! To end this, you will all burn together! Thrall! Defenders of the dream! Do not let him escape. Alright, that was, uh... Not... The dream team shows up right here. The box! The texture bug? <laughs> wow. Crazy. Yeah, I want to see who this is. This is really the dream team, isn't it? Is that Chadgar? 
Chadgar, Bane, Thrall, Jaina. I don't know who this person is at the end, but this is a stacked team right here. This is very Avengers for sure. Yeah, it seems it seems super influenced by the Avengers. Big Bad is a uh, redacted. What? <laughs> That's crazy. So who's this? I saw a couple people I don't know. So I know who that team is. Who is... Who's this team? This person looks so familiar. Who is that? Don't know this character. Cool looking. I like the eyes. Glowing eyes. Bane, Cadgar, Thrall. Uh, Mela, High Mountain. Okay. She's good. Yeah, for Azeroth. Bane's girl. This scene got a lot of hate. Why was that? It was because uh, because it was like the Avengers. I've never seen um, the Avengers that event, Avengers movie, but I have seen that scene where they like <clears throat> everybody pops in. The gnome is Gilbin Melkatork. King Melkatork, Mechatork, Mechatork, Gilbin Mechatork, known king. Okay. Dang, they got some big names here. Trying to push the button to blow up the fleet. That's right, the button pusher. I remember that guy, yeah. Tess, yes. That missing asset. Uh, it felt a little cheesy in-game, it's not so bad. It's not bad, I mean, I don't think it's that bad. Definitely very Avengers, but. The other two are Dragon Scale Expedition, nice. Um, yeah, I'm not sure who these people are, but they're really cool. It's a dragon star for the chance. This person, I know. This person was in that other thing you guys showed me. It's like an uh, undead person who was, uh, the Forsaken, I think. And they were speaking to another female character who you guys really liked. The dwarf to the left is the dwarf in the dragon riding scene. Oh, really? That's so cool. That's good to see that, uh, that's a character. I thought that was like a player character. It was fan service. I loved it. Yeah, that's awesome, Linda. I I agree actually. I I agree with Nimlet. Cheesy is not always bad. Absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> you gotta be able to have fun, especially with a game like this, once in a while. You know. It felt a lot more earned after you did all the questing to allow them. And yeah, that makes sense. Like for me watching, I didn't get that. So. Orc ogre mixed left Rexka. Without game context, you might think these people just randomly show up. Yeah, but you if you played it, it makes sense, right? Yeah. Lillian Voss, Rexa, and Rakan. Thank you, Akaria. Uh, I didn't even realize that Rexar was there. Yeah. Rexar is also voiced by Matt Mercer. He really voiced everybody in this. Yeah, that was really fun. Those people I don't know either. Who is this? I have... I'm really drawing a blank on this person. I know who that is, but who's this? <clears throat> Rexar was the first server I made that, really? That's awesome. Rexar and Warcraft 3. Oh man, there's a lot of, uh, there's so many callbacks. There's so many callbacks. It's a shame Anduin could not join. Anduin could not join, neither could Sylvanas in this little uh, soiree. Travis Willingham. Oh, there you go. He's another, uh, I have my scars. You've doomed us all. Betray. Tourland. He's leading the alliance with Andrew and his wife. Oh, that's right. I remember this. I am my scars cinematic. Wow. He looks so different. That's the I am my scars guy. He looks so different now. What the heck? Illyria's husband. You've doomed us all. Yeah. He looks completely different in the face. Like what? Did they upgrade his model? Is that what happened? Been serving as a regent while Anduin is a wall. Yeah. Do they know? So I have a question for you guys. Do they know where Anduin is, or did he actually just leave? Turlin is Sylvanas's brother-in-law. That actually makes sense. Yeah, Sylvanas's sister. Gen. Yeah, I know Gen. The legend. He looks exactly the same. Same model. All right, maybe I'm just insane. I might have just seen like an extreme close-up of him too. 
Maybe his face was redacted. That's all I have to know. Got a space upgrade. Yeah. You don't think I'm thinking of the right person? All right. Oh, okay. Maybe it's just in-game versus pre-rendered. That actually makes more sense. Yeah. Lortima Teron. Uh, they know where Anduin is. Okay, they know where Anduin is, but they don't... They're not going there. Step husband... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Jaina always knows how to find him, so he can't really hide from her. Well, yeah, I mean, she's a mage. She could probably just, like, sense his presence and teleport over there, right? Not always eyes, just tabs. Yeah, that's that's fair. He, he deserves some time off after all the stuff he went through, to be fair. Yeah. Cody! The Windrunner sisters love their human husbandos. Thank you so much, Cody Allen, for the five. We will use this boon well in the Philidari in the coming wars. You are prepared. <laughs> and you are not wrong. The Windrunner sisters love their human husband. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the five, man. You guys have been super supportive tonight. This is so much fun. Phil being corrupted by the Shadow Flame. He's forgetting things. Yeah, I must be. <laughs> the Shadow Flame is consuming me. Ah. Gen knows where Anduin is. It's not public knowledge. Well, that's humans, Bend. That was funny. I think all of them either loved or married a human man, really. Dang. Might actually be good for context. Would be fun to show him a stay a while and listen. I'll add it to the very end of the playlist. That sounds awesome. Yeah. Varessa Windrunner was married to Archmage Drogon. Fantastic. All right, guys. That's a great cutscene. I thought it was climactic. I thought it was cool. Um, very inspired by Marvel, um, which isn't necessarily a bad thing at all. It was really fun. And we are going to watch the next one, which is Echo of the Firelands cutscene. I think Farak is still around. He didn't die. So let's see what happens to him. He's not happy. You are all useless. Good line. Matt killed that. Worms dare to challenge me. My will shall be their ruin. Yeah. Oh. This temple Dude. Will Dang, that was dark. He roasted. <laughs> he roasted his own people. That was wild, dude. Welcome to the world of Gongfu, where women intrigue and butt kicking commences. Thank you so much, DM Revolution, for the five. We will use this well in the coming battles and war. <laughs> Thank you, man. I know the world of Gongfu well. That was a great scene. Uh, he has completely lost it. I like how he's just swinging for the fences now. He's like, I'm tired of. Having to rely on people, he's kind of becoming self-aware of his uh, own power, too, and being like, yeah, I don't care. I don't actually need anybody to help me. I'm going to do this myself. And I think that's always a fun moment for a villain, too, um, as powerful as he is. Like, he doesn't need help. He's ridiculously strong. He had to use up his power anyway. Yeah. <laughs> How we get the raid started. That's crazy, man. All right. That was awesome. Let's watch the next one. Very exciting. Farak raid intro. Yep, there it is. It's going to lead right into the raid. Here we go. My brother abandoned me. Dang. My sister betrayed me. Yeah, that's true. You earned that, dude. But I didn't need them. I don't need anyone. He's really strong with that axe, too. My time has come. Azeroth will be reborn in flame. Great work, man. And you. Oh, that's will you. Be the first to burn. Is that us? Is that the champion? That was great. <clears throat> that was really cool. Uh, it's it's a one or it's a one shot, and it's really nicely done. He's monologuing. The standout of this, of course, is the performance, as was the focus. Matt killing it, man. I am on the edge of my seat for every one of his lines. It's so good. And now we have Farak ending cinematic. We're getting close to the end, guys. We're getting close to it. 
Let's see what happens to him. Come on. Matt Mercer. Whoa! Whoa! What happened? Oh no! Alex Strat! Ah! Wow! What the? How can this be? What happened? Our spectral powers have returned? What? This is not the Titan's magic. Whoa. This is of our world. Yet unlike anything I have known. They got new power. Amir Drasil has left the dream. A new boon. And while the aspects once gave their blessing to the world trees, this time... Azeroth blessed us. Cool. I felt her presence. It was beautiful. Wow. Ah, now I understand. Amazing. I thought to survive. We needed to reclaim our aspectral powers. Cool idea. But they were never ours to take. It was about coming together as a family. Good, that was stronger. And so we did. Perhaps as we were always meant to do. All of us. When the Titans granted us power, it divided Dragonkind. But in uniting for a cause greater than ourselves, Azeroth's gift has made us, at last, truly whole. We will awesome. use these lessons, old and new, to protect our world as her aspects. Cool. Okay, so I have a couple questions. Number one, um, number one, our boy is dead, right? Farak, Matt Mercer ha has fallen. Um, yeah, it seems like there's not a cutscene. He just died. It just he killed him. Listen, I'm all for it. Like I do love a good death scene. However, if you've got like 29 players attacking someone and blasting them with spells and roasting them with fire, or, you know, I guess he's made out of fire. You know what I mean? Hitting him with swords and stuff. He might have just died. Like he didn't say anything. <laughs> so you know, you don't always need to have a big epic. Um, that's the end. I think it could have worked for the guy, but you know, you fought him and it, it took a long time to kill him. So it's, I'm sure it was justified and felt epic in game. He just died. Like, it's, it's fine. There's, tw there's 30 people beating him. <laughs> bah, 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 bah. He just died. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's fine. Um, so it was really cool. My question is about the power scaling here. So these guys got aspects. How much more powerful are they? Like m considerably more powerful from the lore, right? This person, though, Viranoth. Does Viranoth now have two aspect powers? Like, how powerful is she? She should be absolutely stacked with power. Like, just ridiculously strong, right? Like, couldn't she just take over anything she wanted now? Considerably more? Okay. So tell me how strong... Like, this person must be a monster at this point. To have two stacked powers? So we don't know the extent of the new power. Okay. I would have liked the cutscene for his death just because I like Matt Mercer's performance. But I'm sure he was talking during the fight, right? Do they, do they talk during the fights in the game? As powerful as the story needs them to be. <laughs> True. I love bringing the nether wing into the fold. Cool. One of the most, if not the strongest. Yeah. She's got to be insanely strong. Dragon to demigod. They don't shut up. Okay. That's all I got to know. I, that's awesome. If he was chatting during the fight, you know, I'm sure he got to have like a really cool send off. Even if it was just like, yeah, there's dialogue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. In that case, I'm definitely satisfied with that. Yeah. Phase shifts. <laughs> Somebody said endlessly. It's like, yes, please stop talking. I'm trying to fight you. I love this fight. My, my, I mean, it looks sick. I, I like that villain, how they set him up. And then Eridicron was actually uh, kind of taken care of in the future, right? So, on par with demigods, power wise. Okay, that makes sense, Angela. Uh, I wouldn't have been surprised if they were god level. Wow. Uh, probably the most powerful beings in the world. Jeez. Okay, question. How are they, how strong are they compared to Illidan? Because you guys talked about Illidan. You said Illidan is the strongest. 
Are they stronger than Illidan? Especially Viranoth having two aspects? That's crazy. That's busted. We are the heroes of Azeroth! Yes, Karro, yes. It's a fun raid. Eridicron was not taken care of. We had to undo that victory. Oh, okay. So Eridicron is still there. That's what I thought. I was like, why isn't he here? But he was in the future now, so... Is he back? He's still out there. We'll be seeing him in the... Oh, okay. Awesome. We'll be seeing him in three expansions. That's funny. Much stronger than Illidan. Okay. Got it. That is good to know. I need I need to know that for power scaling. Because you guys said he's pretty much untouchable, but these guys are like demigod level or, or more. He would get clapped. Okay. They are immortal. I really hope that... um. I really hope that Illidan comes back, mostly because it'd be great to see him in this new, uh, in this new graphic engine, and also like the level of acting they could do is 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 sometimes highlighted by the improved lighting and everything. I think it'd be really cool to see him return. But that's just me. Took on Sargra, yeah, I remember that. So I'm gonna have to hold off other forces, right? Lovely. Uh, we have to fi find out what happened to Illidan to see if it would be more probable. Oh, that's cool. Maybe he eat the Titan. Okay, I like the sound of that. He actually took on a Titan, though, people are saying. Yeah. Illidan took on a Titan. That, that's a good point. Yeah. Aren't they, like... Yeah, Titans are pretty strong. If he returns, to be alongside the Titans. Last time we saw him, he was stronger. Hmm. Awesome. All right, guys. Uh, next up, we have... That, that was a great scene. Next up, we have... New Moon. Ritual. In-game cinematic. Looks great. I see Taronda. Very interested what's going to happen here. Let's check it out. Children of the stars. Cool, it has piece, been man. a long journey to this moment. I like the lighting, it's so muted. Our people have fought, suffered, and sacrificed mm. so much. And yet here, in the shade of Amidrasil's young boughs, we may at last begin to heal. Cool. Unto the souls who now watch over this sacred place. Nice music. We offer our blessings. Symbols of dedication, strength, awesome and music. love. Unto this moon well, we offer this precious vial. The last water saved from the temple of Donassus. Donassus. May they bathe Amir Drasil in Elune's radiance. And bestow yes. her blessings upon this place, Bel Amen, the arms of the goddess. In her embrace, may the Kaldori finally know peace. Ooh. Elune Adore. Beautiful, and that's like in the roots of the tree. Man, what a cool image. Absolutely love that one. Yeah. Really nice work. Really nice work indeed. All right. I'm loving it. We're kind of getting uh, a lot of resolutions here happening. Uh it seems after the after that last uh after that last raid boss and uh I like that we're getting these character moments. I talked about it before. Sort of the power of montage in the pre Farak fighting segment um is what I th when I think Warcraft shines at its brightest. Um, so we get a lot of different characters interacting with each other and um, and kind of showing kind of showing their relevance within the story to keep people relevant within the story. Like, okay, I want them to crop up and interact with each other. There's just too many good characters not to use them. So I love seeing what's going on. We just saw kind of the dragon resolution. Let's check in with Toronto. Let's check in with the, the new tree. Fantastic. Yeah. The last several epilogue stuff. Love it. 
Um, okay, we have Isera Goodbye. Let's watch this one. Sounds very beautiful. Isera's always got some good scenes. So let's check it out. Ah, a hug in Warcraft. Would you believe it? I am so grateful we had this time together. That's rare. Ah. My beloved friends. Cool. With the aid of those gathered here. Champion. A mere drizzle blossoms all around I love us. how the ground spirals. That's awesome. Do you remember when you first held its seed in your arms, Tyrande? I remember. Of course. And the music. I cradled it as I would a child and promised the souls within to honor their sacrifice. And I swore to you. Great. I would do everything in my power to protect it. We have both kept our vows. Really nice animation. Facially. It is time I return to Ardenweald. No! To restore the balance and repay a debt to an old There's friend. There's a nice bell there in the music. Mother, I thought you came back to ensure that I would... My precious child. Aww. You are strong, compassionate, and wise. And you have become the leader I knew you would. Cool. You did not need me to guide you. Mother, I will always need you. I really like the face designs of these characters. Like they have. I shall not be far. I am so, so proud of you. Ah. My heart. Awesome. Remember, all time is borrowed, and in this, there is beauty. Great line. Great line. Oh, I love that shot. All is well. Amazing! I love the sound effect and the vocal effect on that. It was great. And hello, Thomas Toft. Thank you so much for the 100. Critical Role, a TTRPG group that streams on Twitch, have some of the central voice actors of WoW. Laura Bailey, Travis Willingham, Matt Mercer, and Liam O'Brien. It's so fun to think about it. These are all legends in the community. Thank you for this boon, Thomas Toft. We'll use it well in the Philidari. In the wars to come, in the war within. Thank you so much, Thomas, for the support, man. I appreciate it. Man, you guys are epic tonight with the support. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I love this scene. This was really fantastic. I hope you liked it too, Thomas. Uh, the music stood out to me here. I love the oboe in the beginning. I believe it was an oboe. And speaking of critical role, Thomas, um, it's actually incredible how many <laughs> how many of the roles that are uh, that are covered by the the critical role team. It's pretty fantastic because they do amazing work, and they're all they're all incredibly talented. You're talking, of course, Liam plays Illidan, uh, Matt Mercer is Farak. You know, they're they're there's a lot of people. Yeah. Are also married, uh, Travis Williams. Uh, I wasn't sure I knew that. That's awesome that they're married. I think the only CR actors that haven't been in one are Ashley Johnson. Nice. Night song is so beautiful. That's fantastic. Yeah, thank you so much for the crowns. <laughs> that is so appreciated. But this scene is great, man. The music, yeah. I would do everything in my power to yeah. protect it. So, question. This, like, for example, these in cutscene... Um, these in cutscene uh, 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 songs in the soundtracks, are, these are available on Apple Music and stuff um, because I would love to still do that Warcraft music night very soon. That's still another thing I wanted to plan out. So hopefully we can do that. Yeah, awesome. The story has been good in my opinion. I think it's fantastic. Yeah. Anduin's VA, fantastic. Josh Keaton, great. He's on Critical Role. Yeah, Isera is an awesome character, and I think, I think honestly, this was a. Uh, I thought. 
This was a great send off. Came back to you are strong. Yeah, really nice shot selection here too. And you have become the leader I knew you would. This one's an old. You did okay. not need me to guide yeah. you, mother. I will always need you. Awesome. I shall not be far. I am so, so proud of you. My heart. Yeah, great scene. And I love how, uh, you know, she obviously spends a lot of time with her family and still respects the other people. This is the shot I wanted to look at. Just, just a beautiful shot. Really, really nice colors. And it's working with the analogous uh, harmony on the chromatic circle that we had established in this whole area and everything. It's really shiny, just those purples and the blues. It's just, ah, oh, so, so relaxing, calming, and satisfying uh, to have those harmonies pop out of the similar colors and, you know, basing the whole scene around it and very intelligently having the sort of portal um, still work very well with those colors and make it aesthetic was a, was a solid choice. For example, they could have made this portal uh, orange. It would have looked cool, but it wouldn't have had the analogous color scheme and harmonies that make this so good. And oh my goodness gracious, we have a super chat from Taquito Burrito. A thousand. Thank you so much for the thousand. It says, when Farak attacked the tree, it was in the Emerald Dream. But at this point, it had just materialized into the real world. To the Dragon Isles. Thank you so much, Taquito Burrito, for this boon. The Philidar will use it well, take it to battle, and honor you for your service. Thank you, man. You guys are so generous tonight. Holy mama. <laughs> Thank you for the thousand. Absolute insanity. It's an Arden Wield portal. Yeah. Well, that's what I mean. It's just so cool um, that, you know, maybe they designed the Arden Wield with that in mind as well because the Arden Wield looks similar, but it's just so nice to have this analogous color scheme. Um, whatever the reason was, it has a beautiful, relaxing feel to it as opposed to, um, you know, her leaving kind of having this more exciting feeling. It has a comforting feeling because of the analogous color scheme. This, this is science. This is color science. So it's really, really cool. Um, even though it's her mother and she's leaving, it's like, everything's going to be okay. You're still going to be comforted, even though, you know, I think that's fun. Uh, can I, can you discuss with Phil making a stream night of a thousand years of war? That could be fun. The dream is not a dream. It's real. So yeah, great scene. And I mean, that shot is just as beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. The colors, the pose, the framing, look at this framed in between the two people. Uh, it's great. Yeah. Really satisfying image. There's still a little bit of asymmetry with the portal being uh, to the left of her. Makes it for a really interesting image. I love it. Great composition. Uh, the pal color palette in the Arden Wheel relative to Isera. Oh, totally, yeah. It, it works very well, and I think it was definitely intentional, even if it's like kind of, um, uh, you know, uh, each one was like a microcosm of intentional. She's going home. It's an audiobook that's an hour long. Ooh, interesting. That could almost be a, uh, hmm. It's an audiobook. That could almost be like a movie night type situation. But you'll have to see. I don't know if that's actually allowed. So we'll have to look into that. But if it's not allowed, we won't do it for sure. Um, the next few, few scenes are so nice. I'm loving these. These are amazing. Yeah. Um, when Sarah died back in Legion, I cried my eyes out. Ah, that's, that's awesome. Caro. I, uh, I really like how they, 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 they utilize characters in my opinion. Now I'm sure everybody will have different opinions on this. I think it's well, um, oh, it was an audio drama. Okay. I think it's well done. Like to kind of have characters come back and everything. Uh, a lot of people have different opinions on this. If you should ever do it in a world like this, where we literally had an expansion that details the entire afterlife and go there and see. I don't see a problem with it, right? We already know that what the afterlife is and what they're doing. There's no vagueness there, so I think it's fine. Uh, but yeah, great scene. Absolutely loved it. Uh, music was a standout there. Tears Story Capper in Game Cuts. Check it out. <laughs> oh my goodness! We have a new dragoon! Autophobia! Welcome to the Order of Dragoons. 
we raise you to the highest order of warriors in the Philidari. Claim your helm of dragon. Claim your sword. And Philidari, raise your weapons to our newest warrior. Thank you so much for being a dragoon. You are prepared. I appreciate you. Thanks for joining the dragoons. I can't wait to see what video you pick. We're going to be looking at that list in a couple minutes. So thank you to all of our dragoons. That's incredible. What a night, guys. What a night. All right, here we go. <laughs> you are broken, Tia. What? You have failed, and your fry core will perish. What is this? Corruption will claim you all. What is Alex Trasa doing? Even your precious aspects. Why does she sound evil? <laughs> oh. There you go. Perhaps you will be proved right that mortals are weak and destined to fall into darkness. Yet the courage of the aspects and the promise of the mortals fills me with hope. This is back. The hope past that time. they will carry on the Titan's legacy. Cool. So if by the destruction of this body, you are purged from this world, so be it. Okay. So he sacrificed himself? Ooh. Whoa! That was insane. Darren DePaul going to work? Yeah, that was awesome. Okay, clearly, like, contextual to, to give us backstory of what happened a long time ago. That was awesome. And that was Darren DePaul. Ah, legend. Tears story. That was Darren? That was Tear? Oh, man. Thousands of years in the past showing the Titan Keeper Tear fighting the Void. Love it. This is Tear's Awakening. So I think Tear's going to come back now in the future? Let's check it out. Did it work? Is he? No way. What? I oh, got moves. Right still. Alex Traza. Legend. Moves. Dawn. What? Welcome back. That's crazy. Old friend. So you you had a hand in this as the player. Okay. Really, uh, really interesting. I love what's happening. Some intrigue that hopefully, I assume, is going to lead into uh, a war with N2. Uh, we're at Seeds of Renewal, which makes perfect sense for what's going on. Uh, let's check it out. I like the look of this. This is... Oh my goodness, that's Gen in human form. And this is actually... Uh, I think I always forget her name. What is her name? Let's check it out. I see Tony. Man, that was awesome. I think the music was a standout in that one. But you guys are telling me this was two weeks ago. So we are like, we are so caught up on this. It's actually crazy. What's left on the playlist? 
Oh, okay. Really excited for this. I was hoping we got to see this scene because I'm like, you know, really behind. I want to see when this was uploaded. This was uploaded two weeks ago. <laughs> I can't believe I'm caught up with you guys. This is actually mind blowing. Yeah, this is mind blowing. Almost totally caught up. Wow. Okay, let me watch this one. I'm loving it, guys. So much fun. It's so strange to be like watching current wild stuff with you guys. <sighs> You're thinking of Liam again, aren't you? Liam O'Brien? <laughs> you always could see right through me. Love the coloration you of the scene. never really healed after you lost It's kind of like brown earth tones. Comforting. After you lost Gilneas. <sighs> Tess. I... I see you, father. Always hiding from your pain. Poor guy, man. He's lost so much. It's why you built that wall in the first place. And now Anduin? Ugh, oh, man. And why you took Anduin under your wing. So but sad. I have always been here. For you. Even if you've never noticed. I know. And... I'm sorry. The world is changing, Tess. And as much as I try, I find it hard to change with it. The world is changing. But so many new raids. you have proven yourself a thousand times over, my girl. Ah, oh, man. Great, great dialogue. And this kingdom now belongs to you. Father, I... Oh. I... You Steven? have always been what makes Gilneas truly special to me. Great. And I should have told you that every day. Okay. Is he... What's happening to him? Is he going away? Ah, that's beautiful. I wish I could take your pain away. Only time will do that, my dear. Hmm. But we have time now. Thanks to you. Cool. I like that one. My that was really nice. Um, just a heartwarming scene, you know? For you. I, uh, for all the big, grand scenes that happen in this game, I really like scenes like this. He's retiring, says, okay, so he's not dying. It sounds like he's dying. Um, abdication. I really like this. Uh, you know, this kind of quiet scene. It feels like epilogue like the other stuff. But, um, you know, the other stuff was kind of more... I don't know what the word is. Kind of group focused. Just a nice intimate scene. Nice dialogue. Uh, some heartfelt comments. Kind of, kind of similar to uh, to uh, the mother-daughter thing we had before, I suppose. But this is great. Um, yeah, with, with this era. In this case, we have uh, father-daughter. And it's just nice to hear that. Like, you know, in the midst of Warcraft and all the, all the insane magical dragon-based things happening. It's like, yeah, let's, let's just have a nice moment. Incredibly human and believable just gave over the kingdom yeah hey i'm all for it someone who feels like maybe they've been through a little bit too much maybe they can't rule as effectively as they as she could let her take over man she's proved sounds like a thousand times over she's an incredible leader again has been focused on the death of his son yeah he's ignored her daughter oh that's so sad yeah he went for the replacement son instead of his daughter very sad but hey it seems like he's trying to make up for it now and you got to give him uh you gotta give him credit for that. I... You have yeah. always been what makes Gilneas truly special to me. I like the design too. You can see the age on his face, like the pain. And I should have told you that every day. Beautiful scene. Beautiful scene. I wish I could take your pain away. Only time will do that, my dear. But we have time now. Thanks yeah. to you. Really cool scene. I like how the music gets um, kind of celebratory at the end. Kind of like victory feeling to it. That was good, too. Uh, Tess gets love and side quests. Oh, okay. I see. 
Yeah, to me, I've seen so little of her, so I always forget her name. <laughs> when she shows up, I'm always like, it's been weeks. What was her name? You know. Awesome. One-fourth of the audience has liked the stream. Wow, thank you so much, guys. Yeah, you get a chance to like it. Helps the algorithm. Yeah, the cut contours of his cheeks. It's cool. It seems like a man who's in the expression, too. He's kind of like, oh, I just want to give it up to you. You know, he's got a very, like, tired feel to him. And I love that. As, as you should, you know. Guys, we're getting close. We're on number 95. Getting so close. Dragonflight wrap-up conversation in game. Let's check it out. My friend, we have asked you here this day to offer our thanks. When we dragons return to our homeland, I love seeing him in the we dragon were form. a kingdom divided. Old wounds and bitter memories had fractured our unity. But thanks to you, and all those who stood with us. Yeah. We have found our way to a better future. That's just so grand to see that. It's awesome. We realized that the mistakes of our past need not define us. Whoa. That we should not fear the unknown. Yeah. That we could embrace our family while building a new legacy for our flights. Was that Abyssian? A legacy that includes all dragon kind. Yeah, like little arms. In recognition of everything you have done, we proclaim you champion of the dragon flights. Okay, this is awesome. This is really awesome. Like, give us scenes like this every expansion. That was really good. Yeah, I love that. Such pu very, very good. This was a great epilogue. Yeah, very, very good. I, I love the victoriousness of it. I also love the, um, like, yeah, give us moments like that, right? I really love the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The grandiosity of seeing all the dragons in this kind of court and everything. That was cool. That was really, really good. Yeah, love it. Uh, we have a new one. It's called, I think we're almost at the end, guys. It's called Malfurion and Taranda. Let's check it. It looks like there might be some hug action. Such beauty. Such tranquility. And th there's a reason for that. It's color science, like I was telling you guys. More Kaldori settle here every day. Love it. After so many years of strife, Belameth offers rest and comfort. Beautiful. This village welcomes all who wish to dwell here. But it shall not be our only home. Hyjal, Valshara, Ashenvale. Yeah, These great are coloration. sacred places to us. Look at that set piece under the tree. We shall protect them forevermore. So well designed. And one day, when life blossoms again upon its ashen shores, we will return to Teldrassil and build a new cool what's this what's this oh is it because he's Sarah went back hey oh heartfelt reunion Whoa! What? Ah, that's <laughs> so cute. Ah, that's so wholesome. Wow, was that a? Is it the only kiss we've ever seen in Warcraft? 
Wow, that was amazing. When life really well done. I, I love the kind of uh, that feeling of going to him and then it's awesome. First cinematic kiss. Has there ever been a kiss in? I don't think I've ever seen a kiss in Warcraft. That was really cool. I'm not crying. You're crying. Yeah, that was really nice. I feel really bad for Malfurion and Taronda at this point too. They're just like, you know, they heard our complaints. Really, Illidan hated every second of it. <laughs> Damn. Only kiss ever. So this confirms that kisses do happen in the game, in the world, in the lore, but they just don't get shown, essentially. First depicted kiss. I thought it was good. It was, it was whimsical. It was whimsically done. You know, it wasn't like a, it wasn't kind of like some weird, like gratuitous thing. It feels like a fairy tale, you know? Yeah. That was great. Yeah, the shot was really nice. It, it was very romanticized. It was very whimsical. It feels like a fairy tale. I thought it was great. Live Illidan reaction. <laughs> Makes me happy for them. Yes. Illidan woke up in a cold sweat in the void. Or I should say he woke up in a cold sweat next to Sargeras. His sleeping partner. And he is not pleased about it. He is not happy about it. Yeah, and this is not like you know. It feels like the end to a saga in in a in a story. And I think it's it's quite nice to have a scene like that, you know. Uh, so emotional, and Chandris is actually their adopted daughter. Yeah, this is really nice too. This is actually the most wholesome part for me. Yeah. Hopefully, they retire to some peace now. I mean, they've been through a lot. I don't even know all the stuff they've been through, and I still know so much. Ah. Get in on this hug. Get in on this. Come on. Man, those ears are going to poke somebody's eye out, though. There's a whole lot of big ears going on right there. It's very dangerous. Yeah, really nice scene. I love the... Uh, I do love the pull away there. And I like how it just... There's not really dialogue after the reunion. It's just... Embrace, peace, and the music is, is a feeling of... Uh, Sargus snoring so loud. <laughs> um, the conversation after the cutscene was hilarious. Really? Yeah. Um, I really like it. I love the um, the peacefulness to it. There's no need to talk. It's just... <sighs> There's a feeling of relief. It's really well done. The Night Elves deserved to win so bad. Yeah. They definitely did. Crazy. <clears throat> so their antlers poke somebody's eye out yeah all those were demon hunters all those clashing th yeah horns ears I don't know that's why guys I just realized why there's no kissing or hugging in Warcraft do you understand it's because the horns and the ears and the eyebrows and everything gets in the way you can't actually hug somebody you just kind of you can hug them from afar that's why, guys. Yeah, the tusks. There's there's a reason there's not hugging. This is a very... Uh, they actually don't know what hugs are. They just, like, did it instinctually here. Yeah, the feathers. Dude, this guy's got feathers. Coming out of his arms. Trolls don't kiss. Probably not. Yeah. Uh, night elves had to pay for the horde. They have to carefully animate the ears. Yeah. You can tell they're like, where can I put their faces? Turn their heads as they hug. I mean, it's nice. I like the visuals, so. Trolls kiss carefully. Advanced cinematic technology. <laughs> yeah. They just proved it, Linda. Yeah. No, I really like it. All, all jokes aside, it's a really... Uh, it's a really magnificent uh, reunion, and I actually, I actually like that. There's no dialogue. I really like that. It just becomes this very familial uh, embrace, and then they they pull out for this great shot. Troll nose bone piercings. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you. Yeah, thank you so much for the positivity. Thank you. 
Tell that to Thrall. That's awesome. Uh, Malfurion is head druid, right? Right. Yeah, he's the strongest druid, right? There was more dialogue, but it was in game. Got it. I like it, man. What? What a cool. Way. Are, are we done? There might be one more. Hold on. Oh, there's something else. Eridicron and Vidernoth Parley. Oh, interesting. Okay, I'm very interested in this. Let's see what happens. It seems to be lagging. Hold on. That was a beautiful scene. And honestly, a beautiful last scene uh, for a sort of ending. This seems like a kind of epilogue. I had received a missive from Eridicron. Oh. He wished to speak with me. And me alone. Okay, that's fine. That's fair. Let's see what happens. I am here. How's this gonna go? It seems your courage has not faltered. Yep. Despite abandoning our war. That war is over, Eridicron. Yeah. It was you who abandoned our cause. Yeah. Who abandoned Farak to his own destruction. Yeah. All for some trinket Neltharion left behind. The Dark Heart is no mere trinket. Its power now lies in the Harbinger's yeah. hands. Awesome reveal. Awesome reveal. Love it. The Void cannot be trusted. I trust its hunger. You know the Titans infected our world. And I infected. will see them extinguished. The question is, sister, will you? I will have no part of this. Mm. Awesome. And the bond of the incarnates is truly ended. You will not see me again. Until the Titans face their reckoning. Cool. But to you, Viranath, I offer one final warning. What's the warning? Stay out of my way. I'd listen to him. No, that's awesome. I really like it. Oh, wait. Oh, stay and listen for a while. This is something you guys added. So we're gonna watch this. This is our final one. Let's see. Yeah, I, I very much, I wanna go back for a second. I really like that. I think that's so fun. How he's like in, inside the top of a mountain. Like what? That's amazing. And he has such control of rock and earth. Like I, I totally believe it. It's right in line with his powers. I mean, what a sick review. It's power now. So good. Power so good. now lies in the Harbinger's hand. You know the yeah. Titans. In He's a great villain. I think this is an awesome uh, sort of ending for this villain. Uh, sort of more like a, I'll be back. Uh, I'll be back next time. You know, I'll be back to finish my plan. I'm not in a rush. I'm chilling. I'm chilling out. I think it's so much fun. Yeah, this is the one Akaria promised. Got it. Um. Where was this? I don't know where this was in the world, but I love it. Great scene. Really good. All right, let's watch this final one, and then we'll kind of celebrate here. We're almost there. My agents and Ratchet confirmed hold on, hold on. It's really quiet. I'm going to raise it up. You're certain it was him. Okay. My agents and Ratchet confirmed it. He was seen buying supplies. Why Kalimdor? Why wouldn't he return home to Stormwind? I don't know. But he was traveling south. Must have noticed my people on his tail. He lost them in the barrens. South? What could he be after? Send word to Jaina. She'll want to know where he's headed. Jaina. You don't want to go after him yourself? If he's staying away, he must have his reasons. We need to trust him. Should I inform Lord Commander Turalyon? No. Not until we know more. Let's keep this quiet, Spymaster. It will be done, King Greymane. 
Interessante. There's some cool stuff there. Um, a lot of intrigue and uh, sort of hints of what's going on. Guys, I believe, Still. unless I'm wrong, we, my friends, are done. Uh, we made it through. We made it through the playlist of literally hundreds, <laughs> hundreds upon hundreds of playlists. This, uh, of, not playlists, of videos and cinematics, in-game cinematics. We have watched every single Warcraft cinematic, and I am now current on the game. I just want to, let me throw on the music here. I just want to celebrate with you guys for a second. And I want to say thank you. This has been such an incredible journey. We're not going to end stream right now, by the way. It's been such an incredible journey to share with you all. It's been such a privilege to share with you all. I really, really want to thank every single one of you, number one, for welcoming me. Um, so, so positively and so kindly into the community. And you guys really did welcome me into the community in a way that is quite rare with the stuff I cover. You guys fully uh, invited me in and you you talked to me like I was already one of you. You weren't gatekeepy, you weren't um, negative to me, you weren't you know uh, getting annoyed when I didn't understand everything right away because you've been in it for 20 years. Like you guys were so, so amazing the entire time. And it's been such a great journey together. I wouldn't change a thing. So, so proud of everything we've done. And I'm just, I'm gonna miss it. I'm gonna miss doing the in-game cinematics. It was such a blast. And uh, thank you, Philadari. Thank you absolutely everybody who's ever been a part of these, who's ever given me a lore dump when I said, hey guys, what's going on here? Who's ever been a lore master in the community? Who's ever linked something? Who's ever helped out with Akaria? And everybody who's covering the, um, covering the cutscenes, absolutely everything that you guys have done is just so, so appreciated. And yeah, I just wanna say you guys are the absolute best. Thank you for making it such a special experience for me. Thank you for making it an unforgettable experience for me. Like no matter what happens, when we play WoW together, we're gonna make a guild, we're gonna go into the game together. It's gonna be so, so much fun. Um, I will always remember this. This was such a special time. This was such a special time that I could share with you guys and everybody who showed up, you know, whether it was two minutes on one stream or I know you guys, I see your names in the chat right now who have been here every stream, literally every single stream that I've done. It means the absolute world to me. And I just want to thank you for every minute you spent uh, hanging out. And most of all, for the kindness uh, that you that you shared with me as I went through this because it's just been a blast It's been an absolute blast You actually get a lot more of yourself than I expected Maybe we'll see about pirates soon. Yeah, and listen, we're gonna be playing World of Warcraft if you guys are just joining If you're joining right at the end. Thank you alchemist. How you doing man? Um, we're gonna be playing Warcraft together uh, in the coming days, we have a Warcraft community night celebrating, uh, and people are going to get to tell their stories about World of Warcraft and call in. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. Then we're going to play the game for uh, a few weeks before Final Fantasy VII Rebirth drops. We're going to focus on that for a few days because it's like a really big game. You know, it's a it's a story that's one and done when the game's over. So once we finish Rebirth, we'll get back to Warcraft, get back to other things. But that's just a rough plan right now very very proud of what we've covered here and like I said I will never forget it it's been such a cool experience to go on with you guys and I feel like I now actually know World of Warcraft like I know all the characters the major ones um, I know the story obviously and uh, it's a really great feeling so thank you everybody shout out to Akaria who made the playlists uh, shout out to our amazing mods all of our members our dragoons um, specifically who help out so much on every stream um, what a what a privilege it's been to go through with this, uh, and and I get to see why Warcraft is so amazing, and why you guys celebrate the game. Like, it's it's one thing if I just clicked on these and watched them offline or watched them on my own. It's another thing to have hundreds, hundreds, in fact, almost a thousand on our peak stream, 
Warcraft fans in the chat just celebrating the game and it's like a transcendent experience to be like you know oh this is the scene because of this and this character and this is my favorite character and this here's the context here here's the lore unbelievable once in a lifetime experience and thank you all for making it special for me and as campfire said i am now prepared <laughs> yeah it's it's really it's been really special so thank you guys i can't i can't say it enough thank you so much you guys have been the best and uh, I'm really glad that these are chronicled and they're always going to be on the channel, these streams that we went through so we can go back and always, uh, you know, check out these moments and my first reaction to them all. And of course, a lot of them are posted as separate videos on the Warcraft playlist on the channel. But what an amazing time. And I just want to thank you all for, for supporting the stream. A lot of people liked videos, commented, whatever, uh, super chats and, and membership gifts and everything. It all means the world, you know, it allows me to keep doing this and to show up. And you guys are just very, very kind. So thank you for sharing this incredible journey with me. The cinematic journey may be over for now, but it really is just beginning as we're going to play World of Warcraft together. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick break and then I'm going to do some viewer choice. All right. So we're going to continue the fun tonight uh, with some Dragoon viewer choice because we've exhausted all possible Warcraft <laughs> cutscenes in existence. Uh, so we'll take a quick break. I'm going to take a stretch and uh, let's do it. It's going to be great. Oh, here we go. Neat Fury. Member for two months. Thank you, Fury, for two months of being a Dragoon. We thank you for your service and being the most powerful warrior in the Dragoons the Philidari. Thank you for joining the most powerful order. Please show your swords. You are prepared. <laughs> Thank you so much. Two months is absolutely insane. I can't wait to see your next video um, as well. It's going to be so much fun. We're going to get to that dragon list in just a second. Thank you, Fury. Yeah. Still Warcraft cutscene to watch. Mostly fan-made, though. Right. There's fan-made ones, but there's also the ones in-game that are very contextual that, uh, that I just haven't checked out fully. Yeah. War Within Features trailer. You know, Saren, I think I actually watched that at some point. Believe it or not. I think I actually did. But anyways, we'll be back in just a second, guys. Viewer choice on the way. Um, if you're wondering what the heck that is, it's uh, my highest uh, membership tier on my YouTube channel. You can click the join button to see the different tiers and the perks. Um, they get to choose videos. They get to make content for the channel, essentially. So it's a lot of fun. We're going to cover some of those, try and catch up. Um, because we finished early. We finished all the cinematic, so... You guys are the best. I'll be back in a minute. Thank you all. Wow, what a journey. Anyways, we'll be back in a second. Appreciate you guys.
welcome back everybody hope you had a good break thank you so much charlene been a pleasure to have you here been a pleasure to have everybody here been great and if you're new by the way hop in the discord if you don't want to miss our playing warcraft together it's gonna to be a whole thing yeah it'll be really good um i've seen uh i'm gonna hold off on war within just for a second because i may be watching it soon again for a uh, for a collab so i don't want to do that right now just in case um yeah i have a cool collab coming up that i've been trying to plan out forever i've just been so busy it's like crazy but it's all good stuff so <laughs> anyways i'm pumped because now we're gonna get to finally play and uh move along some really important steps here um anyways it's gonna be great um i am going to i am going to pull up the viewer choice list i think it's actually pinned i think i pinned it in the dragoon so let me go grab that let me see. Order of Dragoons. Yes, yes. And for our new Dragoons tonight, I know there's a couple of new Dragoons. Don't forget to, you know, let us know what you want to watch. All right, friends. So go to the list here. This is what we're looking at. Um, oh, that's right. Our next one is Final Fantasy XIV, Realm Reborn. Very, very awesome. This will be a good one to watch. Yeah. I, uh... I have unclear if I've seen this. Uh, I might have seen it if I did. It was like a decade ago or something. So this is perfect to watch. And I've absolutely never done a reaction video to it. So I can't wait. Three cheers for Ikaria. Yes. Three cheers for Ikaria have been incredibly helpful. Yeah. Organizing all this. Again, I know absolutely nothing about Excel and I couldn't make it if he paid me. But this is, uh, it seems like a lot of amazing work to me. <laughs> so... I'm really, uh, I'm really thankful. All right, guys, this is gonna be it. Um, a Realm Reborn, and this is suggested by, let me make sure I say it right, Kilios. All right, I'm gonna do my intro. <clears throat> On my Final Fantasy cinematic journey, I'm very excited to cover FF14 once again with Final Fantasy XIV, A Realm Reborn end of an era. This particular video was suggested by our Dragoon tier member, Kilios. If you want to suggest a video yourself, click the join button and become a Dragoon. If you've been enjoying our time together, make sure to check out some of the other videos we've covered on this channel, including all of the other Final Fantasy XIV cinematics, which I've broken down in great detail. All right, Kilios, make sure I said it right, yep, Kilios. Shout out to Gilios, great choice. I'm gonna click our link here and get into it. Yeah. Is that you still like? Yeah, I feel like I know what happens in this, but I can't remember everything that goes on here. So this is a great video to check out again. Um, mine is almost up. Ooh, Rook, yours is coming. Exciting. All right, you know how it is. Final Fantasy Lore Masters, join me in battle once again. Square Enix. I got to meet, uh, if you guys know, I got I got to meet Yoshi P and play Final Fantasy 16 with him. That was pretty epic at the FF16 launch event, so. It's since given me a really cool uh, view on his work. This is the song, I know the song is Answers by Nobuo Uematsu. With Susan Calloway, right? Really cool opening, man, with just the male choirs. Boom, and you see this kind of like apocalyptic image. Strong opening, man. And it feels like doom is near at hand. Is that, uh, what do you call it, Ulda? Oh, man. That... What a great intro. I love that we're seeing the people of the Eorzea's reaction to this. Like, from the ground. Man, Nobuo is so good. His songs feel so familiar. It's so nostalgic. Even when they're new. Oh, God. Oh, that's how you do a war scene, man. That's what I'm talking about. 
And the general is up on the cliff. I'm seeing references to every Final, Final Fantasy VI with the Magitek armor. Final Fantasy XII with the Judge Magister Gabran armor. Oh, what an impact! Such great choreography and camera movement. Wow. Yeah, another song. That's that six reference. Yes. We're seeing all the class abilities in action, but it's in a war. Okay, this is just amazing. Let's see a healer in action. Woo! Unbelievable choreography. That's Sid! This is so good! I don't remember this at all! This is amazing! Great sound design on that. Yeah. Stand and fight! This is why FF14 is so cool. It's a celebration of Final Fantasy. The legacy of Final Fantasy runs so deep for all of us. And to see, as I'm saying it, Bahamut has come! And the music lights up. So epic. And just destruction incarnate from Mahmoud. What sword? <laughs> you guys are wild. <laughs> Terrifying. It's so crazy watching this after Dragonflight, World of Warcraft. Bahamut is terrifying. Yeah, what a shot. No Buo doesn't miss, man, this music. I love this kind of... The choir comes in right as hope blossoms. The music too good. Hang on, man! Hang on! Jaw-dropping, such a cool image. Yes, get out of there, get out of there. Is that Thancred? He's so loud. Yes! He's too strong. So cool, come on. Come on. No. Get them out, no. They all made it out. No! He didn't make it. But every end marks a new beginning. A realm reborn. Wow, man, that goes hard. I forgot how good that is. I must have seen that like 10 years ago. Remember just the last shot of him being like obliterated. What a great scene, man. I mean, I'm I'm always impressed. Listen, Visual Works, I'm their biggest fan. I'm their biggest fan. Uh Square Enix, if you don't know, Visual Works is like Square Enix's Final Fantasy uh filmmaking studio, essentially. They're they're incredible. They they are just nobody touches them in my opinion. Absolutely great. Um, but I forgot how hard that went with Nobuo's music too. If you don't know Nobuo, composed the music from Final Fantasy 1 through 10.
just absolute legend. Um, and you know, his work is present in every Final Fantasy after that. Um, and he still does like songs for the games, but his work is just like the complete backbone of Final Fantasy and really all gaming music, in my opinion, along with like Koji Kondo, um, who did Zelda and Mario and a couple of others, like solidified what gaming music is um, back in the 80s. But anyways, fantastic. I absolutely loved it. I'm going to break this down. There's a lot to talk about. Um, if you enjoy our time together, like I said, make sure to subscribe, hop into our Discord. We have a really great Final Fantasy community. We've got FF7 Rebirth coming up. We're going to be playing that on stream. It's going to be so much fun. So make sure to sub so you don't miss it. But let's talk about it. Um, absolutely amazing stuff going on here. I think we had a, do we have a new Dragoon? We have a new Dragoon. BJ Honeycutt, welcome to the Order of Dragoons, our highest order of warriors in the Philidari. We're happy to have you. Now claim your place in our number. Rise, take up your weapon for the wars to come. Awesome, man. Thank you so much. And shout out to Kilios. Great choice for this, man. I could watch visual, visual works uh, cinematics all day. They, they really took uh, gaming, in my opinion, to uh, an art form. In the late 90s is when visual works was born with Final Fantasy VII. This is why the game is so famous. They really made essentially the first AAA game with Final Fantasy VII and made it a cinematic experience. That's why we have like World of Warcraft and stuff like that today where you can see like full scenes and games. They weren't really like that before. So uh, this studio is just legendary. Um, kind of the evolution of the medium and you can see their work kind of, this, I mean, has to be 10 years old at this point, like I said, and it's still so rich. Um, so rich visually and it's so kind of cool to have Nobuo come back for that same reason. Do the music. Love it. But I love how they show the people of the world kind of looking up completely helpless, and then we get into the battle. It's like not everybody's helpless. Um, we're trying to fight it. We're trying to do something about it. And it, it has like a many tiers of functions. You know, on the one hand, it's just like a cool image of war. You can see the the jobs, the job classes in action here. What a great shot, man. What a great shot. The clapping sword. Um, really nice transition there, too, up to the cliff. And I love that you see kind of different uh, layers of what's going on. The generals up here who are in-game characters. What is this character's name? It's escaping me. But this character, yeah, he's very modeled after Judge Gabranth from Final Fantasy XII. And this is what I was talking about. You have, uh, in the space of a few shots, it's a celebration. It's a celebration of Final Fantasy Legacy. Final Fantasy XII with the brand. Final Fantasy VI with Terra and the Magitek armor. And black mages, white mages. Um, it's all there, you know? Oh man, we gotta talk about this shot. We gotta talk about this shot. Um, but I wanna say, the sort of referential art goes a layer deeper than just showing Magitek armor here from Final Fantasy VI. Look what it does. So not only is this a Magitek armor shot, but it is the exact position of the Yoshitaka Amano art that appears on the cover of Final Fantasy VI, which would have Terra up here on the, uh, uh, at the helm. But beyond that, there's even another layer because it has three Magitek armors present, which is like the opening march to Narsh from Final Fantasy VI. Like, it's just all there. It's fantastic. Uh, Balsir. Gaius von Balsar. Balsar. Awesome. Thank you. So I want to talk about this shot. We have the black mages here. And it's just so cool. It's pretty much, again, it's pretty much what we were just talking about with World of Warcraft. Like watching the late cinematics for people who have been in the game this long. Who've been playing Final Fantasy since literally the 80s. It's just such a legacy to be able to see this and have like the kind of referential visual language that's a part of Final Fantasy uh, and the audio feeling of Nobuo doing the music, but also to get this kind of like modernized view of it feels very complete, very full circle. Uh, I wanna talk about this shot cause it's just, it's just visceral sound design. I mean, look at this. And that's one shot. 
absolutely insane. We gotta look at it like slowly. Good. So you have this shot where he's pulling it up from the ground and dragging it on the ground, and it's so awesome. Just like you can feel the weight of the axe, and the way they do the choreography and the sound, it feels like it weighs a hundred pounds. I mean, look at that, and look how they use the full frame, full frame to show the momentum of this. And then he comes in, it gets really tight to show like, oh man, he's coming in, you know, in close with it. And then just smashes these guys and multiple people are in the air with that. Fantastically done shot. And then he comes back the other way. And you see somebody else trying to get in there and it is not gonna work out well for him. Boom, but with that, it's like showing the strike is so powerful. We've become one of the soldiers. We have flown up into the air. And now the camera is from us. So look at it from that perspective, right? We're one of the soldiers. Quick, get in and hit him. Boom, and we're up in the air. Just such a clean shot and classic visual works. And what's crazy about visual works is this, this, this film studio who did this. Talk about visual language. They've established so much visual language in Final Fantasy that is like so sort of like medium defining that it has transcended into anime. It's transcended into to real film and everything. Sort of like Advent Children uh, uh, choreography and camera work and stuff and the kind of like light, very big jumps and stuff. You'll see that in all kinds of media these days. It's incredible. Great shot too right there. Somebody tries to get in. Mm. It's still the same shot by the way. And you see this guy like run up to him from the sky and then it's almost like it comes back in and now it feels like it's from the perspective of the axe wielding guy here boom the warrior of light so great and then we get the hero shot we get this pose which is so you know heroic and of course we get the reaction shot very well done and then what's really cool is you see this guy who's very, very strong. He just destroyed people with his ax. And then we have this. He looks up to the sky, takes off his helmet. He's like, but I can't stop that. And this is a great setup for what's to come. He feels powerless, even though he's that strong in battle. And then on cue, he looks, he feels powerless, right? He's getting overrun by the magic attack. And now this is cool because in a very World of Warcraft way that they did it in their first trailer, we get to see uh, in, in one place in this, in a very like, contextualized place in this battle, we get to see some of the different jobs. Like that's an archer, right? And that is just so cool because it's a, look, it's a full party. Like you're out in a dungeon doing a, doing a fight right now. There's like healer, paladin, uh, white mage, warrior, would he be called or barbarian? I don't know what that job is called. I haven't played in so long. Um, Paladin. A la, you know, Cecil from Final Fantasy IV. Absolute legend. I'm gonna need a bigger axe, yeah. Honeycat says, I'd love to watch you react to FF14 cutscenes, but at the same time, I want you to play through the game. Yeah, that's kind of a debate I've had for a long time, Honeycut. Like, do I react? Um, yeah. Do I play Durex? I'm going to play a little bit later this year with Aaliyah. Um, a lot later this year, I should be, should say, like in the summer. So please make an intro uh, and post it later in your action video. Oh, for this one? Yeah, I already did an intro. I'm pumped about this one. Yeah. But I love it. Like, this shot is just. Incredible shot, guys. The choreography. Look at this. So we have. What happens? He gets shot. In this one shot, we have the, the team run up. And this feels almost, almost like Chrono Trigger. Who knows Chrono Trigger? One of the greatest games ever made. Almost like it's an X, uh, an X tech, what do they call it? X strike from Chrono Trigger uh, with the techs. These guys are running up together. And look at this. He swings, he hits. And just the momentum. This is one of the things I've always loved about Final Fantasy. Um, they really take the fantasy aspect of being this strong uh, to wield a weapon that big. Uh, as if you could. Look at that. The momentum of his strike. 
carries him around his friend. And then he lands in like another strike and they're doing this like tornado <laughs> strikes. And I'm pretty sure what he just did is an in-game technique as well. And then we come in, it's like uh, as if we're running and then we don't know. There's a Magitek armor right in our face. So cool. And the black mage just roasts him. Fantastic. Like the detail in his armor, yeah, it's really well done. It'll all be redacted. <laughs> and there's a. That's Sid. I know Sid, right? He looks older in game uh, graphics. Over there. And there it is. Everybody's looking up at this thing, so then it's like, what is this? And then on you, it, it shoots down, yeah. And this is where it's cool. Like, the music really explodes at this point where Bahamut comes out. What sword? Yeah, there's the sword. And I love that it has this, like, chthonic feeling to it. Just absolute destruction. It's so well voiced. Yeah, and then I love that this is this is the party that we saw fighting, and they're just like, okay, now all that stuff doesn't seem like such a big problem. Great shot. Can FF14 lore masters help me out here? So Bahamut was sealed away, clearly. What's going on? Like, what is the backstory? Because I don't remember. It's been too long. So I've played A Realm Reborn, but it's been like 10 years since I was at the beginning of it. Woo, and you just see cities getting leveled. Horrifying. Great shot there, too. Again, it shows the, sort of the position of powerlessness against such a mighty foe, you know? Um, I love it. That's a great shot too, with the kind of silhouette, and you see these just streaks of magic, meteors. Terrifying. And right on cue, man. When the key changes the music, it's just boom. It's like hope, a little bit of hope. What's this guy's name? Is it Lucan? Like Lucan from Final Fantasy 1? I love that, man. It's so cool. It's like this little light of hope is getting overwhelmed. You can see that in the color choice there. It's great. And this is just horrifying. <laughs> Look at the size scale. I love how they designed behind it too. It looks like a, it looks like a mountain come to life. So cathartic, so raw of the earth, you know? Like it's hewn from stone. So that is Thancred, right? But yeah, I like, I like how you're seeing people all around the world kind of like doing stuff. Like there was more going on the scenes besides this battle. Trying to make a difference. Archon, Lisuan, who's that? Bahamut was killed and resurrected as a primal. The primal was sealed away in the moon as a battery. Got it. Got it, got it, got it. Need to watch Final Fantasy Spirits Within. That would be awesome. How you doing, Alejandro? I love the blue, too. It's so rich. It's that same color of hope. Think of those lights. That's the old guy? Okay. So these are like the month, like the zodiac signs in universe, right? So what happens here is he's he can't be contained. He tries to seal them away, right? And he just blasts it. Oh, that's their grandfather. Okay, the twins. 
And this is the moment where it's like, yeah, we're finished, aren't we? There's nothing we can do. So then what happens is he casts a final spell to just get everybody out. That's what happens, right? Yeah. Teleports everybody out. And then... What a great shot this is. You see him get out, and then it's just like, but I don't get to. Like, what a what a sacrifice, man. And this is what I love about this. Um, look at the range of emotions in his face. There's a sadness there, and there's obviously, like, pain and fear and a lot of different emotions. But then, he's like, you know, I saved everybody. What a sacrifice. That's incredible. I, I really like that ending. That's the shot that stuck with me, clearly. This is what I remembered, but... Beautiful, beautiful scene. I love right there where he kind of blinks his eyes open. And he's kind of like, no, I'm going to look into it, you know? It's blinding, but like, I'm going to look into my fate. This is the fate I've chosen. Really beautiful moment. And uh, well animated by Square Enix. Fantastic. Like I said, if you guys enjoyed this, make sure to subscribe. Uh, make sure to hop in our Discord. FF7 Rebirth on the way. We'll be playing 14 later this year, too. So He can't be contained. There's a direct sequel to this cutscene. Oh, awesome. I'm doing good. All right, Alejandro. That's fantastic. Yeah, what a cool concept. And I thought it was very well executed. It also, it functions very much like a scene. Um, I would say more than the Dawn Trail one. For sure. Yeah. That was awesome. But I loved it. Yeah, definitely. You can see, too, how far the cinematics have come even since this. But it's still so good. And it's quite... It's quite on par with the new cinematics, even though there's like little improvements here and there. It's insane. But yeah, fantastic stuff. All right, that's it. Uh, shout out again to Kilios. Really good choice on the uh, on the Final Fantasy choice there. Uh, thank you to our dragoons. What do we have next? How uh, we can out here? This is Eve. I have no idea what this is. This could be a fun one. Um, this is Eve by Torx. Okay, this is from Torx. Well, let's see what it is. I actually have no idea. So let's click it and do it. This is by our Dragoon tier member, Torx. I don't know if you're in chat, Torx. If you are, say hello. Uh, and same thing with Kilios. Remember, if you want to let me know what you were thinking with this, if there's anything you want me to check out, um, if there's anything you wanted to make sure I catch in this, you can always tell me uh, later in the Discord. Just at me in the Dragoon's chat if you're not able to make it live. So I definitely want to hear what you were thinking. Um, this is Eve, maybe a game trailer? Let's check it out, very excited. My husband plays Eve, oh great. All right, let's see what it is. Ooh, it's like a constellation. All voices recorded by Eve online players, really? That's fun. Okay, what we're gonna do, guys, is we're gonna sit 10k off a target, we're gonna blap it really quick, and then we're gonna warp to the run spot. Does that make sense? Roger. Yep. Roger. Okay, stand by. Roger, it makes sense to me. So, hey guys, here's the deal they got their prophecy fleet up, and it's free? Then Razor also has an Oracle fleet, so we should have some interesting stuff about to happen. Cool. So, it's gonna be like this. Beautiful image. We're going to portal through, and at the same time, the triage carriers are going to jump, just the triage carriers are first. Everyone clear? I love that it's pretty much like roleplay because they're so into it. It's awesome to be able to get lost in a world like this. Sure, everyone's playing right now. <laughs> Whoa, cloaking? Oh, that's awesome. Okay, this is so cool. Decloak, decloak, decloak. Torpedoes out. Oh, this is fantastic. It's insanity. I really like how uh, you feel like you're a part of the world, no doubt. I'm carrying a hundred times more than my ship is worth. Huh? There were some pirates chasing me. Um, there's one guy chasing me through like five different systems. I need to get the 
It sounds like roleplay is fine. It's worth about 166 million isk. For some people, this might not be a big deal, but for me, it's huge. It's huge, man. Seller 4.2, pretty nice. Gonna produce four of them, two days, 19 hours. Oh, this looks complicated. We can expect wow. to make eight to 10 million around there. What? Do you like stock markets in the game? We've got five modules to fit in wow. Here. The ship speed is actually pretty good. It can hit 4K a second. We're gonna hurt that now by adding on some armor buffer. That's deep, man. I'm impressed. Up, success. Yeah. Thanks, dude. Yay! Something's so much fun. Yay! <laughs> oh, yeah. Such fun. Oh, that's fun. I was done now. Like, uh, less than a week. Oh, look. Oh, oh, God. Oh, look. Oh. Wow. What is this? Like a space bat? Why are you decloaking? <laughs> What? It has the entire economy of the game? I love it. This is Eve. Alright, that was crazy. Like, you could really get a feel for the culture of the game from that. The spreadsheets part is wild to me. I, I did not expect that. That's really, like, that's so particularly uh, targeted to a certain type of person who loves, like, micromanaging everything. I thought that was really fun. I also love the, like, kind of half role-playing uh, of having to, you know, it reminds me of, like, WoW raids or FF14 raids where it's, like, everybody's got to play their part. You know, many whelps, many whelps. Everybody's got to, you know, focus on their particular part. It has to be run very smoothly because, man, that looks like a well-oiled machine if I've ever seen one. Yeah, he's also got some really beautiful visuals. Um, I like the kind of coldness of it, um, and there's a loneliness to the ships. I, I don't see any humans. I'm assuming there's no like running around as a human. It seems like you kind of live inside your ship, which is fun. And you kind of pilot your ship around. But what I like about it is there's this sense of community when you're able to uh, join your fellow ships and like go into a space battle like that and stuff. I think it's I think it's really fantastic. So cool, man. Really. Oh, you yeah, guess you have the character portrait, so that's fun. But really unique video. And thank you again. This was. This was Torx. Thank you so much, Torx. Really cool video. <laughs> I did not expect that. Yeah, thank you for that choice. Oh, there's Torx. There you go. Uh, it's not uncommon to have battles with hundreds and sometimes thousands of players. Thousands, Torx? That's wild. Yeah, I really appreciate you picking this, Torx. I love seeing games that I've never heard of. Like, I've never seen this game at all. A really good choice, Torx. I got some awesome choices tonight on the on the beer choice. Love that game, but I can't play because I get too addicted. Really, I listen. I could see how the numbers. I mean, uh, listen. You're coming from a a, a JRPG lover here, um, especially the classic ones. Like the numbers can be very addictive and very fun to uh, to manage. So it's a cool game to read about. <laughs> That's funny. Die. Really fun to read about. Wouldn't play it. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome, Torx. I really, uh, I really enjoyed watching it. Is there anything else you wanted me to check out? Let me scroll. Did I miss anything from Torx? That's fantastic that you. Uh... Oh, you said I love this one because there are no voice actors. The developers took real recordings of player voice and used them to create a game rendered cinematic. Yeah, I. It felt very authentic for that Torx, and I also really like the. Um, I really like the enthusiasm. It reminded me of almost like Grand Theft Auto Five role play as well, and how how into it people get. They're still having fun. They're still having a good time, but there's just that little bit more level of uh, you know taking it seriously and getting into it. So, good choice. Thousands of players in a battle sounds ridiculous and like a lot of fun. Yeah. What's up, Brian? Um, did Philip ever watch the Seven Point Two Anduin? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Space battles are full player versus player. Not like WoW where we're fighting an NPC enemy. Oh, it's full player versus player. That's so cool, Zelly. Yeah. 
Economists have done PhD thesis on this game. Really? <laughs> I need to tell my uh, I need to tell my friend Frank about this game. He's gonna he's gonna freak out. He loves he loves stuff like that. Bottom left uh, during the video is actual guild name. Oh, it is. That's awesome. Yeah, there's there's a lot. New Kaldari. There's a lot going on on the screen like this part with all the spreadsheets and everything. CCP. Uh, MMO based on vampire where you move the underworld. Really? Interesting. It never came out. What a shame. That's an awesome pick, Torx. Thanks for the choice. <laughs> yeah. Never heard of this game. I don't know how. It's definitely outside of my, outside of my like uh, circle, I guess, because I'm not like into like economy simulator as much. So I'm really glad he shared it. It's one of those games I wouldn't have, wouldn't have caught wind of. That's why these are so fun. My cousin's been playing Eve, says Brick Girl. Oh, great. It's his favorite game. He's a fan of RTS games. Now, that makes sense. Yeah, it seems like that sort of micromanagement and attention to detail is required. Great stuff. All right, thank you, Torx. I loved it. Let's go back to the list. Uh, this one is by Rook. Uh, and it says, who is Chris Metzen? So, Rook, this one is... I think Rook is in chat because he said so earlier. This one is about 20 minutes. Um, is there a segment that you want me to watch? Uh, what, what, was the, what was the consensus on this one? I can't remember if we discussed it. Because we were saying we want to keep them um, 10 minutes or under if we can. I play VTM, so our org was so excited for it that they pre-released the trailer. Really? <laughs> My husband played Strategy. That's so fun. CCP Crowd Control Productions. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Akaria. Rook, yeah. What's your thoughts on this, Rook? I know it's, I know it's, uh, it's probably a great video. Is there, is it part of a live stream? You said we could keep it. All right, yeah. This one because it's the last Warcraft uh, stream too. I'm probably, I'm probably a little bit more open to it. Yeah, and this was before we established that rule. Well, let's check it out. Let me raise it. Chris, in the world of gaming, some names stand out. Names Kojima. that have shaped entire universes and oh, left man. lasting impressions on players. All right, so just official shout out to this is Rook's choice. Who is Chris Metzen? Thank you so much, Rook. Uh, I've heard a lot about him, so let's let's check it out. One such name is Chris Metzen, renowned for crafting the universes and scripts of Blizzard Entertainment's top awesome. franchises, including none other than World of Warcraft. Awesome. Great shot. I remember that cinematic. But what makes him so special? You know, I'm the, uh... Why is Chris wow, he looks so different. such a big deal to the world of Warcraft and Blizzard community? Legend. Legend. Today, we will dive into the story of Chris ah. Madsen, a young artist who joined Blizzard and went on to create worlds and characters that millions have come to cherish. We'll explore his career, his impact during the golden era of nice gaming, documentary. and how his return to Blizzard could reshape the future of World of Warcraft. This guy's got a fun voice, the narrator. To understand why his return to Blizzard in December 2022 was such a big deal, oh, we have to video. go back to when it all started. In the early 1990s, Jeez. Chris Metzen was a young artist introduced to Blizzard Entertainment, then known as Chaos Studios. He had been recommended by a friend who had seen his work. <laughs> While he initially believed he was joining a graphic design studio, he soon found himself at the heart of a growing video game developer. Uh, Chris's fine. first role at Blizzard wasn't as a storyteller, but as an animator and artist. Really? His initial work was on a game called Justice League Task Force. I think Task that's so Force. fun, and it However, shows that you it know, wasn't long artists, before his storytelling skills became visual arts evident. And fine arts, Around like, the same time, Blizzard was also so producing creative, a man. game called Warcraft: Orcs and Humans. Warcraft, I played Here, this game. 
Chris was called on to contribute the to memories. developing this game using his artwork, illustrations, and documentation. The memories. At the time I of its release, no one really had high expectations or knew what this game would go on to become. Wow. However, the 1994 release marked the beginning of a universe that would captivate millions. So much fun. It quickly yeah. became a success, oh, selling over 100,000 copies within one year memories, of release. Man. It ultimately went on to sell 300,000 copies. Wow. The following year, in November 1995, awesome. Entertainment Weekly reported that the game ranked 19th out of the top 20 CDs across all categories. Wow. This secured the company's finances for the first time since its inception and would prove pivotal. By 1995, the uh, sequel, yeah. Warcraft 2 Tides of Darkness, yeah. was already well underway, with Chris's role evolving significantly. He stories? wasn't just contributing art, but shaping the game's fantasy based fictional universe, designing scenarios and missions, and deepening the lore. Cool. This game was a turning point, not just for Blizzard, but for Chris as well. It marked the beginning of his journey from an artist to a storyteller, That's so a transformation that would define his career. As the 2000s dawned, Blizzard Entertainment was no longer just a game company, yeah. it was a phenomenon. It was producing hit after hit, okay, so he really, and at the heart like, of this transformation was that. Chris Metzen, yeah. whose storytelling yeah. had become integral to the company's identity. That's so fun. Chris's influence spread across Blizzard's franchises. He played a role in developing the dark world of Diablo and the interstellar universe of StarCraft. What? He Whether played... it was providing voice acting, he made everything. narratives, or conceptualizing characters, Chris's touch was everywhere. Each game, he made each everything. expansion, bore the hallmark of his creative vision. Characters became more than just avatars on the screen. Like this. They had depth, motivation, and histories. The worlds they inhabited were rich with lore, teeming with stories waiting to be discovered. By the time Warcraft 3 Reign of Chaos was released in 2002, yes. Chris's role had expanded even further. He took on the role of creative director, wow. a position that allowed him to shape the game's story, concept and script. This game would further prove his creative abilities were superior to most directors. Under yeah. his narrative, he introduced players to iconic characters like Thrall, Arthas, and Illidan. They're all These Illidan. weren't just characters, they were legends in their own right, each with a tale that resonated deeply with players. Awesome. Thrall, the Orc war chief with a vision for a united horde. Arthas, the prince whose descent into darkness would shake the world. And Illidan, oh, the this. night elf torn between redemption and his own ambitions. Awesome. This complexity and vision brought about a narrative revolution in gaming. And it showed in the numbers as well. Warcraft 3 was a commercial success, yeah. shipping 4.4 million copies to retail stores and selling over wow. a million within a month. But, believe it or not, even with a decade of success under his belt, somehow, the best was yet to come. Chris's most significant contribution to Blizzard and gaming fans yep. would come in 2004, after years of development and delays that oh, were man. now somewhat expected to come with any Blizzard project, World of Warcraft finally launched in late 2004. Classic. The game was a sensation and a massive success. By January 2005, the game had sold 600,000 copies in North America, Australia, and New Zealand, and set a record with over 200,000 concurrent users. That's crazy. So many people played at once, he that Blizzard had to stop selling the game to add more servers. Blizzard knew that they had a phenomenon on their hands. Yeah. It soon became the most popular MMORPG ever, that with 12 million wild. subscribers by 2010. <laughs> by 2014, million. it had over 100 million registered accounts, and by 2017, what? it had generated over 9.2 billion in revenue. That's insane. It went from just under 500 employees That's like before Genshin World numbers. of Warcraft <laughs> on their first to year. over 4,600 <laughs> employees Madness. worldwide. This massive shift was in huge part due to Chris's storytelling and vision. 
What yeah. set World of Warcraft apart during its inception was its rich lore and setting, rooted in the well-established Warcraft universe. This yeah. deep lore and backstory offered a sense of familiarity to players. Furthermore, while many MMORPGs primarily emphasize team play, WoW uniquely catered too? to a diverse He's player base by allowing both solo adventures and cooperative gameplay. Since its release, WoW has introduced nine major expansion packs, yep. each adding new content. Players can create avatars, explore the game world, battle monsters, complete quests, and interact with other players or non-player characters. While Chris might not have been as hands-on as he was with previous titles, his influence was undeniable. He contributed to the game's script, artwork, and even lent his voice to bring characters Draw. to life. The world of Azeroth was a work of art. Beyond the epic battles, sprawling landscapes, and intricate mechanics, there was the emotional depth that Chris Metzen infused into scene. the narratives. That was a great scene. It wasn't just about completing quests or vanquishing foes. So you'll never it see was it about again. living through the stories that tugged at the heartstrings. But we watched it together, Moments okay. like Grom Hellscream's tragic sacrifice no. left players with a mix of triumph and sorrow. This ability to evoke such profound emotions proved Chris's unparalleled storytelling. He didn't just tell stories, he made players live them. In many ways, Chris Metzen's journey mirrors that of one of his most iconic creations, yeah, Thrall. Both were leaders and visionaries who led their respective communities through periods of change and growth. Just as Thrall united the disparate clans of the Horde into Thrall a cohesive so cool. force, Chris united the players He's with voting. narratives that transcended the digital realm. And much like Thrall, who knew when to pass on the mantle of leadership to focus on personal growth and exploration, Chris recognized moments when it was time to step back, allowing fresh perspectives to shape the stories. So, in an unprecedented move, in September 2016, Chris Metzen announced his retirement from Blizzard, yeah. venturing into new creative territories. What did he do during this time? This shockwave rippled through the community. The news was met with a mix of disbelief and sadness. For yeah. many, Chris wasn't just an employee of Blizzard. He was the heart and soul of the stories they loved. His narratives had shaped their gaming experiences, and his departure left a void that was palpable. Questions started to arise, like, why did he leave? What would become of the stories and characters he had created? This wasn't just World of Warcraft that would be affected. Other major games like the Diablo series yeah. and the new smash hit Overwatch would come into question. Overwatch. According to Metzen himself, his retirement after 19 years came as a result of moving on to raise his new baby. He wrote, That's fair. I'll be focusing on the one thing that matters most to me in all the world, Good. my family. They're the core of my life and the source of my deepest joy and inspiration. But as it turns out, he would later go on to say it was deeper than that. Oh. Back in 2014, Metzen said that morale at Blizzard was low hmm. after the failure of Blizzard's MMORPG Project Titan which was cancelled in 2014 I don't know what that is. following developer disagreements. Yeah, I don't even know what it is. Dang, never the heard team it. had spent several years on Woo! it, and the That's disappointment rough. was crushing, especially for him. Metzen said one of his greatest fears was letting Blizzard and its fans down. Yeah. This self-imposed pressure intensified, okay. especially after the cancellation of Titan and his subsequent involvement in the Overwatch project. Despite hmm. its success, the journey was marred by Metzen's escalating anxiety, hmm. leading to panic attacks during personal moments like oh, watching terrible. movies with his wife. By Dang. 2016, so with multiple that, projects including the release of World of Warcraft's Legion, Overwatch, and personal milestones like the birth of his child, the weight became unbearable. Realizing the need for a shift, Metzen decided to step back from Blizzard to prioritize and nurture his personal life. 
Chris's departure signaled the end of an era. For over two decades, he had been a guiding force, shaping narratives, creating worlds, and forging connections with players. But as with all stories, endings pave the way for new beginnings. While Chris's presence at Blizzard was missed, it also allowed new voices to emerge and fresh perspectives to shape the narratives. Ah, man. The post medicine era at Blizzard was one of exploration, of finding new directions. But what a shame was this Titan. a good thing? Or did his absence create Wish an irreplaceable void? After 2016, Blizzard Entertainment entered uncharted territory. Titan was used the storyteller, to okay. whose well, narratives hey. had been the backbone of they many iconic games, was no longer at the helm. While understanding Chris's decision, the community couldn't help but feel a sense of loss. That's the question bad. on everyone's mind was clear. What would Blizzard look like without mm. Metzen? In the immediate aftermath, the company continued its trajectory, releasing new expansions and titles. However, as time went on, subtle shifts in storytelling became evident. While Blizzard's commitment to creating immersive worlds remained, some players felt that the narratives lacked the depth and emotional resonance that had been a hallmark of the Metzen era. Right. It wasn't just about the stories, though. The tone of the games, the essence we that just watched made that cinematic titles unique, <laughs> seemed to be fading. Some welcomed the changes, seeing them as necessary for growth. Others felt a sense of nostalgia, yearning for the days when Metzen's touch was evident in every quest, every character arc. Games like World of Warcraft saw expansions that, they while the grand in scale, sometimes missed the mark in terms of player engagement. Characters and plots, which once felt deeply interconnected, now sometimes felt disjointed or lacking in depth. So, so I got what yeah, happened? I didn't know the details Was it of just that's, Chris Metzen leaving? That's disgusting, man. Or was there more behind the curtains that Good we rinse. couldn't see? <clears throat> Throughout 2016 to 2022, Blizzard witnessed a significant exodus of talent. This drain of experienced professionals particularly impacted the development of Diablo 4. Just before the game's announcement at the Game Awards, the Washington Post highlighted that the Diablo team had seen many departures over the past year, most of whom were seasoned contributors to the series. An insider from the Diablo team revealed that the leadership failed to effectively adapt to these changes, further hindering the game's progress. This was exacerbated by a fragmented workplace culture, with various departments not being in sync with each other. Oh, man. The game, which carried the legacy of a beloved franchise, faced a rocky launch. Hmm. Players encountered a slew of issues, from gameplay mechanics to narrative inconsistencies. The game's huh. struggles symbolized a larger narrative. Blizzard's once shiny reputation for developing polished products was under scrutiny. Yeah. Yet, perhaps the most significant challenge was not tied to we any game release. Game, Allegations of widespread Oof. discrimination yeah, and sexual trouble, harassment I heard. I didn't know within the, the company it, came to light, casting a long like kind of shadow over Blizzard's internal dynamics. Rough stuff going on, While yeah. it's impossible to attribute these changes they, solely to Chris's they got absence, rid of the people who were his being departure undeniably amazing. left a hole to fill. He wasn't just a storyteller, <clears throat> Disturbing stuff. he was also a key part of the team that was sorely missed. The community, while ever hopeful, It's like Metzen made everything that Blizzard was Would and the was magic celebrated. of the, the Metzen era ever return?
Island, except Brandon Sanderson. <laughs> uh, shout out to Nixiam. Shout out to Nixiam. Uh, this seems to be like a kind of cool um, mini documentary that he did about Chris Metzen. So seems like a great channel. Good stuff. Very knowledgeable guy. Uh, thank you. That was a really good one. And that's by our user Rook, our Dragoon member, Rook. Really good choice. Yeah. Awesome. All right, guys. I think that's going to call it. That was, that was a pretty long one. So we'll call it there for tonight. Um, guys, I just want to say again, thank you so much, man. <laughs> what, a, uh, what a great way to, um, to end all this. What a great way to do it after we had uh, spent so long looking at all the cinematics. I uh, I just gotta say, I appreciate you all. Again, I know I said all my thank yous and my kind of emotional aftermath of the, of the cutscenes, but I wanna thank all you guys. Thank you everyone for being here. Uh, it means the world to me. We got some really exciting stuff coming in, uh, in the next couple of months, uh, really in the next couple of weeks between Warcraft uh, and Community Night and everything that's going on. So all I'm going to say is, if you're not in the Discord yet, and you're a WoW fan, hop in there. Uh, the best is yet to come, my friends. The best is yet to come. we got some amazing weeks coming up, uh, and I cannot wait to share it all with you. Thank you, guys. We'll be planning stuff in the Discord about playing WoW, and I'll be asking you guys for a lot of help. So, Lore Masters, thank you uh, ahead of time for the questions I'll have, and we're going to set up the guild. We're going to do everything. Now, Community Night is coming soon. Um, probably in the next couple days. So get ready for that. I'll let you know ASAP when that's scheduled. Thank you, friends. Shout out to everyone. Shout out to Akaria for all the help on all the playlists. Um, thank you, everyone. It says Campfire. We did it. We made it. We got through it. It feels crazy. It's like such a habit of mine now to do these streams every couple days. And that's it. We made it through every single one. What a fun thing. As I said, thanks for making it special along the way. And um, I can't wait to, you know, continue the next chapters of the channel with uh, all you guys. And I hope to see you guys here for our future content because it's been an absolute blast. But thank you all for all the support, all the memberships, uh, the super chats, and of course the subs and uh, everything. Yeah. What a journey it's been, man. I, like I said, I'm always going to remember this. I really am. It's been a really, really special time for me as a content creator. Um, being so welcome to a completely new community. Literally, literally had zero interaction <laughs> with Warcraft. And uh, it means the world to me, so thank you guys. Very, very fun. Mind-blowing. Yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Kiritasu, Ruthie, Annie, Zelly Moogle, Costco Hot Dog, Yolo Alchemist, Night Runner, Paul the Sloth, Akaria, Campfire Goth, Jerry, Rook, Michelle, Miss Marvel, Kimsta, Mystical, Ferdowoon, Huthor. Appreciate you all, friends. Have a great night. Thanks for going on this amazing journey with me. The next step begins very soon. Good night, friends.